Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here today. We have a lot of Pokemon action cooked up for you. It is going to be four awesome days of VGC action, and I could not be more excited to have the honor to bring that to you today. I am Daniil, also known as Better to McGee, joined by the one and only for today. My name is Eric, also known as King Lovechuck. I am excited. It is the day one of this four, this quatret of tournaments. <laughs> we are entering reg Regulation G here, and the start of the introduction of our favorite restricted Pokemon here, such as Kyogre. I love this guy. I hope we get to see some Kyogres, which I think uh, has never been uttered before in the history of all time. This is based <laughs> on how of a how big of a Pokemon that's been in the competitive scene for so long. But based off of what we were talking about, it actually doesn't seem to be having a huge impact based on the format and all the different Pokemon that are running. Around and really causing trouble uh, no. is that the case for you yeah i think that's true so we'll go over regulation g this is our first format we're seeing one restricted pokemon so we'll see our big threats such as kyogre and groudon are allowed legal big threats today we're seeing both the the ice rider and shadow rider calyrex oh, those are two yes. incredible forces that have done a lot of damage we're also seeing the rise of zamazenta I love that, by the way. I always was more partial to Zamazenta, the shield Pokemon, the underdog living in the shadow of Zacian, the much more powerful and much more overwhelming threat. But, you know, for those who aren't aware, the new f uh, regulation that we're in allows you to pick one legendary Pokemon for your team of six. And of course, as always, you bring four and it's VGC, two on two battles. So, you know, a lot of creativity has come forth with this new format. And of course, with this being the midseason showdown here in May. This is basically the last chance a lot of these competitors will have before the cutoff in the 31st to get points to qualify for Worlds. So I'm sure that a lot of people here are going to be bringing their A-game. Yeah, this is going to be an intense weekend of Pokemon action. As Neil said, this is the final chance to get points for Worlds. Worlds cutoff is at the end of May, so you don't have a lot of time. And for a lot of competitors, this is their first chance to play Regulation G. This is the <laughs> format that people will be playing at Worlds. So this is the chance to get used to the format, pick up some games, and pick up some great practice here. And a great point that you brought up to me a little bit earlier as well. This will probably be their last chance to play uh, Regulation G for a while before Worlds because there isn't going to be many, if any, tournaments going on in June. So this really is like a last chance in a lot of respects. It's, But it's also a first chance to get a taste of Regulation G for a lot of people. And and it's going to be their last chance to qualify for Worlds. And I think a couple people here are just at the cusp of qualifying. So they really want to make sure they get as many points here as possible. Yeah, this will be a big weekend. There's a lot of points on the, on the line. If you top cut any of our four events this weekend, that's 50 points. You need 600 to qualify for Worlds. So that 50 points is going to go a long way. Yeah, 50 points can do a lot. It's a make or break. It's a big difference besides, uh, you know, making the choice whether or not you can qualify for Worlds or you got to watch it from home. Like us, at the very least. <laughs> you might be watching it, but at least you'll get to enjoy the quality Pokemon action. But today, let's focus on today. We have a lot more Pokemon coming up, but we got to kick it off right. Of course, today for our first match, I believe, believe we have Bradley versus Justin, if I'm not mistaken, as our first match for the seniors division. So excited to see what teams they're bringing, excited to see how they're going to try to adapt to this new regulation and just now we get to do the fun part in my opinion which is just talk about pokemon so <laughs> yeah. what are you excited to see in this tournament today bradley's one of our locals in the windsor area we saw him back here a few weeks ago wipe the floor in our sort of mini event where he beat the re the other three competitors here pretty easily mm -hmm. so it'll be exciting to see how he does today obviously starting off with our seniors division these are our youngest players of today so we'll see how they match up together and see what the future looks like for Pokemon here in Windsor. Exactly. It's always a good idea to really give a strong start to your grassroots, the young ones who give them a chance to really excel and see where they go from there. It's so exciting seeing Pokemon players of all ages come out to compete at all kinds of skill levels and do some real damage in the competitive scene. It's always exciting to see the kinds of teams that people bring and the infinite creativity that Pokemon lets you bring. Of course, you might be able to tell what kind of Pokemon I like to see on my teams here and there, okay? <laughs> Um, I'm more partial to the ghost types, but what kind of Pokemon are, are you? What's, what's your go-to? Oh, I mean, it's hard not to say Kyogre. Like, Kyogre is on... <laughs> like, cheated. all three of these Pokemon here are on my top really? ten list, so... Including Sfeel. Oh, Sfeel's great. He's so round. He's such a round boy. <laughs> I don't know if roundness directly correlates to ah. competitive viability. I mean, uh, we look at one of the best Pokemon right, right now with Terrapagos. It's pretty round. Uh, it's more, uh... 
more over shell. Yeah, shell? Like, is it shell shaped? It's I'm a semicircle. Sure. It's, but it's round. It's got like a big wheel. True. And he's causing a lot of turning in the Pokemon meta. You like that? You like that? <laughs> so, what do you think? Some of the most impactful changes that this regulation has brought. You know, we've seen a couple of times here on the Saints stream what the format was looking like, what kind of teaser people were making, but now things have kind of changed and what are yeah. some of the ways it has we've seen uh pelipper has been on the rise pelipper is really? sort of a pokemon that's been in the wings that you know you see on the odd weather team but now pelipper is on the rise sort of counteracting maybe that cried on also providing wide guard support for a ton of spread moves that are in the game right now seeing wide we're looking at three of our biggest threats have spread moves mm -hmm. so being able to wide guard and block all of those is super impactful another pokemon we're looking at the rise of is incineroar as much as Incineroar has been has been good, Incineroar has gotten even better. We're in a format where protecting your restricted Pokemon is so important. And now Incineroar is back, and he's dealing just a ton of damage. We're seeing Will-O-Wisp Incineroar on the rise. We're seeing U-Turn. We're seeing Parting Shot. All these different ways that they're attacking Incineroar to make him even better for restricted Pokemon. And that's one thing that we were also talking about a little bit. I just feel like a general rule of thumb, when Will-O-Wisp is viable, then that I feel like the meta is in a good place. Physical attacks and special attacks, having that blend being threatening. I feel like last format, it was very special attack heavy. Um, that's just at least the impression I got from what we were seeing. Parting Shot, of course, still being a huge threat in that regard. Intimidate now having more of an effect. Um, Will-O-Wisp, of course, having more of an effect. Uh, Glastrier, um, the Ice-type Pokemon, huge bulk and also does a lot of damage, but being able to burn it allowing people to get a little bit more opportunities to counterplay that um so that's a lot of utility that incineroar brings to the team there's so many there's it's more like what can't you do with incineroar and really basically nothing <laughs> uh, incineroar is just on so many teams and there's so many reasons to bring incineroar to stop down so many of the big threats in this format where here is your restricted Pokemon. It is the key to winning this battle. Mm -hmm. Having Incineroar shut them down, forcing them to leave, and then being able to pick off the other Pokemon makes just Incineroar so viable. We have seen the downturn of Ogre Pond, though. Really? Regulation okay. F, Ogre Pond has been running wild, but now we're seeing these stronger restricted Pokemon come in and sort of just shut down Ogre Pond, sort of take away its place in the meta. So it'll be interesting to see if we do see an Ogre Pond today. I don't know if we will, but it'll be interesting to see if it shows up. I like the change in the format. Ogre Pond representing... Um, it's it's a double-edged sword having a Pokemon like uh, Ogre Pond be so prominent in the game format because what Ogre Pond allows you to do is it's just such a staple of a Pokemon. It allows you to do so many things. allows you to take so many attacks as well as deal out so much damage. So you don't really have a reason not to run it. So it kind of causes some kind of standardization and stagnation a little bit. But with that, it allows you to kind of prepare for the standard. When you have something to build your team around preparing for, it allows you to really come prepared. Now, with less standard things coming into play, people basically get to choose one of six different Ogre Ponds, or more or less. Yeah. But one Ogre Pond that's going to be such a huge and more impactful thing for your team. But here, we're done talking about Ogre Pond for now, unless one of these competitors have brought them in, because we're getting to the first game. We have Bradley versus Justin, and already we're seeing Guess who? That Incineroar. Both Incineroars <laughs> on both sides of the field. And here's our first look at Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider is a weird Pokemon in this format. Shadow Rider is a Pokemon that's seeing a ton of play but hasn't seen any major victories. So I'm curious if this is the tournament where we'll see Shadow Rider truly shine and show what's making it such an impactful threat. Yeah, so, you know, Calyrex Shadow Rider, it is a relatively... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It is an insanely threatening Pokemon, but the oh. problem is it's just very fragile. Yeah, and I mean, you look at Incineroar here. Incineroar attacks really well in the Shadow Rider with Snarl, with Knock Off. This is actually a very dark type Incineroar, which is interesting. We're seeing that Snarl low the special attack probably to counter Shadow Riders, to counter Kyogres, and to counter Terrapagos. We are seeing a Terra off the bat here. Terra into that Shadow Rider. Mm. Into the Terra Fairy, actually a great Terra there to block a lot of those Dark type moves and to shut down, th uh, shut down that Raging Bolt. And this is going to help address some of the uh, issues we're mentioning. It being very fragile, the Fake Out will also be very good at that too. But this is where everything gets serious, okay? Yeah, nasty there, plot. <laughs> there's a nasty plot. That Shadow Rider looks incredibly scary. Parting shot though. Parting shot. We'll get it to minus one here. 
It's a, it's a oh, again, it's a plus one, it's it's still, but it's still mind. incredibly strong. It's going to be a huge and potent striker for sure. I would be worried for anything switching in right now. It has the Chi Yu uh, that could be a threat. That's a fire dark. Uh, so with that fairy type being prominent, hopefully that's going to be a factor that's going to allow them to make some good decisions. But with that grassy surge coming in too, with that Rillaboom, you got one extra thing to worry about now. Yeah, Chi Yu is, is a hit and miss Pokemon here. The one thing you have to remember with Chi Yu is that it does lower the special attack of everything on the field, or lower the special defense of everything on the field. So here's Chi Yu coming in, and now Chi Yu is putting on, it would make it Calyrex actually even stronger if it came out, that Shadow Rider. So we'll see if he starts laying on the attacks for Shadow Rider here. I'm not sure what his moveset is, so it could, who knows what it has in the bag. It could <laughs> pop, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe it's got Terra Blast, and we'll look to just instantly knock out that Raging Bolt. We're taking back the Incineroar and sending the Raging Bolt out now. I like this a lot because not only does this allow you to threaten and intimidate back with your switch in, but I feel like Raging Bolt might be able to comfortably take a couple of these shots. But first, we're seeing a huge hit coming out from Calyrex. Calm mind, you wish that came out just a little bit earlier. Would have reduced some of the damage that you just took, but you're going to take it now. It's at pretty low HP, but at least it's going to be slightly bulkier, plus the Grassy Surge would allow it to heal a little bit more. Whether or not it's going to be able to tank another hit, I'm really not confident. I'm not sure. No, that Astral Barrage did a ton of damage. I mean, Raging Bolt going to get up to maybe 40% here. Just under 40. It's still going to be in a, t a really good position here. I think you could take another Astral Barrage, but it won't. It might just barely live. Rillaboom's not looking great here. And now we're looking at the other side of this Raging Bolt that's now that's putting pressure on the opposing Raging Bolt. And so we'll see we'll see what happens here. That Thunderclap is really strong. It's a super impactful move. Actually switching back out Raging Bolt. You're getting that intimidation back with your Rillaboom being primarily a physical attacker. I really respect this play. Just make it be even less potent, even uh, less of a problem for you. Um, but we're going to see the Protect come out. Whether or not it's going to be very effective here, we're going to have to see what the play was. This is going to be another Astral Barrage, not too surprising. This Rillaboom is most likely going to go down as a result of this one. I'd be surprised if not. And that is a KO'd Rillaboom, allowing the switch in of the Chi Yu, or maybe the Incineroar. I don't know if you really want to bring the Incineroar out. I think you want to just start coming out swinging. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to be careful with the Chi Yu. The Chiyu is, Chi is incredibly strong, but you're, are, you're checking into a Fairy-type Calyrex that's even boosted now. I think Incineroar, and you just try and start knocking down, maybe start knocking down that Shadow Rider and force it to switch out. I think if you do want to get anything done, you have to at least land one solid hit, which is very difficult because every turn this Calyrex is just doing spread damage that's going to KO your Raging Bolt um, and might not KO the Chi Yu, but it's still going to take a lot of damage here. I wonder, it is running a Choice Scarf, so it should at least outspeed. Um, it could go for a Snarl, perhaps, just to reduce the damage, maybe even allow the Raging Bolt to survive with all of those heals. It is that pretty, it is pretty healthy right now. Yeah, I think I think the Heat Wave here, it, are they, they're going for the Terra Ghost Overheat, really trying to block okay. any damage that Calyrex can do and just hit it as hard as they can. I like that. What's well. interesting here is Bradley didn't bring his Restricted Pokemon. I don't know if this will be a super common thing for the rest of the week. It's interesting to not bring you Restricted, so he must really? trust the back half of his team to really pull a lot of weight and deal against the other Restricteds. Could also be good just getting a feel out for your opponent, how they play, allow you to better adapt and play with your state Restricted in the next one. But Overheat coming out, it is going to KO the Calyrex, and that is going to be that huge threat finally taken out. So now this game has opened up quite a bit, thankfully. Uh, gonna have a little bit of breathing room and maybe we can see some good plays coming out. Okay, that's gonna be a huge hit onto the Chi Yu with that knockoff from Incineroar. And that's gonna be one less Pokemon to work with for Bradley. Yeah, so it really depends. What is the back half here in Austin's team? We have we have that Raging Bolt up. He, we know we have he has Raging Bolt. We don't know what that fourth Pokemon is. Mm -hmm. So that's the that question. Room. What does he have? He has a Moongus. Ah, a Moongus. Usually this is a lead Mon, just because of how potent those spores and redirections can be. But now we're seeing it come out as the last Mon here. Uh, that, Ooh, Intimidate. 
or the uh, Incineroar, I call it Intimidate because that's what it does all the time. It does have goggles on the side of Bradley. So. But here's the interesting thing, no fire move. His options of dealing with Amoongus are a little restricted. So he has to deal with that either Incineroar and leave Amoongus to to try and take it out. It is going to be a tight battle here. Yeah, this, this might just come down to the wire. I really could imagine this going either way. Incineroar gonna get the fake out onto the opposing Incineroar. Dragon Pulse coming out to just chunk him down oh, it lives. further and a crit. Oh. Oh, but that, that Incineroar, so chance of doing things. Safety this goggles. Sport. Safety goggles, Safety goggles. awake. Oh man. Okay. The swings are coming through. I gotta see the HP for this Pokemon here. I really wanna know how scared I should be. This Raging Bolt is proving to be a huge threat now. Grassy Surge actually running out. You don't see that too often. Usually the battle's over before any terrains dissipate, but here we are, they're still swinging and they wanna take this further. Now, I, I we're seeing some really interesting sets in these Pokemon that are very different to what we've seen before. I mean, Calm Mind Raging Bolt has been such an important Pokemon for this battle. It's been a very persistent threat this game. It basically got knocked down to about three, uh, one third, and now it's back up to basically full. Um, the Protect is going to come out, keep that Amoongus in things. Knockoff is going to come out as well. Uh, oh, the first knockoff was from the other Incineroar onto the Raging Bolt. Parting shot. Things are getting protected, but the opposing Incineroar is now reduced in effectivity. That's going to be switch out back to the Raging Bolt on the side of Justin. And. Now we're really gaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are in the end game here. We'll see what they can do here. We have a Raging Bolt full health, but at that sort of, that's at neutral. And we have the Raging Bolt that's plus one at special attack and special defense. It's just, I, I, there's no obvious right play for either of these players, unfortunately. So you have to be really scared no matter what you're doing. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe we actually see an Incineroar switch here. We don't see the Incineroar switch. Protect comes out. That's Draco Meteor really into the Protect. Really smart. That's just another turn gone, allowing Bradley to get some more usage out of this Incineroar. That's a Snarl. So now this Raging Bolt is probably not even going to get a KO if that Draco uh, Meteor, uh, Meteor comes out next turn. It is going to be super effective. Plus, Raging Bolt is pretty strong. I'm actually not sure. But Raging Bolt is so tanky. It's I can't say for sure if it's going to survive the Draco Meteor next turn. But there still is Spore as a threat. That's yeah. another thing I just remembered as well. I think, I think Draco Meteor will do a ton of damage, but at minus one at this point, I'm not sure if it's enough to knock out. But we'll see. see. Draco Meteor lands, does not get oh, the knockout. Ah. I mean, we're talking about minus one special attack into a plus one special defense. But Dragon Pulse retaliation, it's getting, this is so scrappy. Knockoff to finish it off, forcing the uh, Incineroar to come back, or did that Incineroar get KO'd? I don't remember. No, Incineroar I'm pretty sure is still alive. Yeah. I think it's swapped out for... Okay, but now his Raging Bolt is asleep. So it's an Incineroar versus Incineroar and Amoongus for like two turns. Yeah, this is this is the interesting thing with this regulation. It's, there have been a lot of matches that have come down to Incineroar and Amoongus being the last Pokemon <laughs> alive and having to take out each other in these slow end games because they're so strong. Fake out could come out from the opposing Incineroar just to stall it one more turn. At least Bradley's Incineroar is at full. Thankfully, they have no real super effective moves that can come out to threaten. Um, what do you go for here? Does I don't think his Incineroar is running protect, so you can't even protect. No, you I think you take out the Incineroar it. and then you just start 2v1ing the Amoongus. Uh, it looked like he actually switched the knockoff onto the Amoongus. Yeah, I mean, that's not a horrible option if you think about it, right? Not at all. I, I like that. Just make it easier and easier to keep playing your game. Rocky Helmet is going to get knocked off. It's going to be a decent amount of damage as well. And the knockoff coming out from the opposing Incineroar to take off the leftovers and take him down to really low HP. Pollen Puff to heal up his Incineroar. Okay, I really think maybe the knockoff onto the other Incineroar would have been uh, a, a the play, but again, it's it's harder to it's really hard to make any kind of decision here with such little information to work with. You don't know, and there's so many factors that go into the choice. Rage Powder coming out now too to make sure that anything that was going to come out is going to hit it instead. And that Raging Bolt is looking to be as good as done. Yeah. We'll have to see if Raging Bolt stays asleep for one more turn. Or it gets knocked out here. We are down to a 2v1. A an Incineroar without a lot of good tech options into an Amoongus versus an uh, almost full, about 
Oh, just gonna forfeit. Yeah. That makes sense. Realistically, there weren't a lot of options you could have gone for at that end there. You really couldn't do too much damage. Incineroar versus Incineroar versus Amoongus. Yeah. It, it's... Damage dealing is not any of these Pokemon's real strong suit. It's more so preventing other Pokemon from doing damage. So you're not going to one-shot anything. Necessarily. Yeah, it was it was some great pl play by Bradley there. He made a lot of, lot of right moves. He just got out-countered by that Shadow Rider Calyrex, which is so strong. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see if he brings in that restricted Pokemon to help turn that edge for him. She was a hard Pokemon to use right now. It needs to be set up correctly. I'm assuming Terrapagos is his other Pokemon if he's pairing it with the Chiyu. That seems to be a pretty common pair right now. So we'll see what they do. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how they're going to go into this next game. What one common theme I've seen throughout all of the tournaments here at St. Clair is game twos are always very interesting. But game one, you're not sure where you're going to go into. You're not sure exactly what you're going to do. But game two is when you have some information, you have some ideas, you have some game plans, and you have things to work on to kind of bring everything back in. So I really want to see how we're going to see the retaliation come out on the side of Bradley, any adjustments that might be made and uh, how he's going to try to take this one into the next game. Um, of course, near the end of that game, that's when a lot of decisions really came down to the wire. Every turn mattered, every move mattered, and it came down to such a close call. I wouldn't be surprised if next game, it, it really is anybody's game. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of change-ups. It's also early in the week. I mean, if these both players are here for the next three days, this could be their first. This will be their first matchup, of possibly four. <laughs> exactly. So we'll see how they, what they do to counter into each other and sort of develop their own meta game. Seeing that Calyrex Incineroar lead against the Incineroar Chiyu lead. And we're back to a pretty similar... Actually, this is quite different from the first ones. The only thing that's similar here is uh, the two Incineroars and the Calyrex leading off with the Raging Bolt, I believe, in the previous one. So now, with a little bit of information on his side, Bradley's able to make a better decision on to what to lead with. I'm interested to see how he's going to try to make this turn come out, but Intimidates and everything all coming out. Special defense reduced. I think he might just try to KO the Calyrex right away. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if that's the plan. Just get it off the field and not want to deal with that anymore. Oh, I'm noticing now his Incineroar actually isn't running uh, uh, Fake Out, so that's why we haven't seen it coming out, but... Oh, actually, no, it is. That, sorry, that was the Chi Yu's move. Yeah. Set. I was confused for a second. Oh, because all those moves, I could believe, uh, you know, Incineroar has that, but Protect coming out onto the Calyrex. Um, fake Out is going to connect onto the opposing Incineroar, whether that's a speed tie situation. You just got to take it. Snarl coming out now. It's going to hit the Incineroar at the very least. Not going to be too effective since Incineroar is not going to be doing the uh, special attack anyways. But hey, damage is damage. Yeah, it's that little bit of damage to Incineroar. And really, that Incineroar didn't get to do anything. So it was, all, it was a free turn for Bradley at exactly. that point. Yep. So we'll see now what he does going forward. Having that double Snarl is actually really interesting. It's a great way to shut down Calyrex. Exactly. I really like that um, strategy now. But hey, you know it's not looking good for you right now. Switch it out, bring out the Amoongus, start wreaking some havoc. I really respect that switch out. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, Amoongus puts a ton of pressure on. And if he can knock out that the the flying goldfish there in Chi Yu, Amoongus really can just start doing damage. But at the very least, this Chi Yu actually does have fire moves. So this Amoongus might not be around for very long. No. And then Sinora not without the fake out pressure now. Bradley's still not bringing the Restricted, so I'm not sure what his restricted Pokemon is. Only time will tell throughout this day, maybe, throughout the tournaments in the coming days. But right now, he doesn't need a restricted Mon. He's no. going to run with his classic strategies of Regulation F. Knockoff is going to come out to take off the Assault Vest from the Rillaboom. Going to do a good amount of damage as well. But with that grassy terrain out, heals are going to be coming out all around. And now it's time to play ball once more. Rillaboom wouldn't be surprised. Oof, actually, Grassy Glide might not be very effective against anybody. Of course, Fake Out coming out. If that's the move you have, you want to use that every turn. Basically, our, you know, maybe U-Turn into the Amoongus might not be a bad idea, but... Do you want to bring your Raging Bolt out? You could bring out the Incineroar, because it does have the goggles. You could call out a Spore. A lot of mind games going on here, but ultimately we're going to switch out the Chi Yu yeah. and bring back in the Incineroar just to reduce those attacks even more. It's interesting that they that you don't just go for the knockout on the Amoongus, but maybe he's not sure on his calculation there. If the calculation isn't there to one-shot the Amoongus, then maybe saving the Chi Yu to come back in later is, the, is a great move. 
exactly. And the wood hammer doing honestly a decent amount of damage, because all things considered, to that incineroar. Parting shot's gonna come out to the opposing incineroar now. Maybe he just wanted to avoid getting that parting shot. Maybe he was kind of feeling that coming out and doesn't want to have to have to switch in his Chi Yu in an unfavorable turn. Just switch out the Chi Yu from now and then start base. He's just doing a switch in one turn early here. Um, but now Calyrex coming out and. We're gonna have to be dealing with that now. Spore coming out as well, but a good read. Safety goggles are going to protect them from that. Yeah. What a great, what a great turn by Bradley. Actually, just complete the Ancidor switch was an amazing switch. He blocks taking the parting shot. He blocks the spore, and now we're looking at a grassy glide probably into a Calyrex that's gonna do a ton of damage. Calyrex switches out the Calyrex. <laughs> You going back to Incineroar? Ring we are going back to Incineroar. Oh man, it's just the Incineroar carousel, isn't it? Just constant rotation of this Pokemon because it's so potent. I, w I wonder what the lowest attack uh, reduction is right now. I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, Rillaboom's at like minus three at this point. Uh, but Woodhammer is definitely not going to feel like it. Parting shot coming out onto Amoongus now, and we're probably going to see, be seeing Chi Yu back into the fray. Again, yeah, not be we'll either see Chiyu or maybe the Raging Bolt will start showing up to start getting that setup going. I think that's what he'll try running and do. Running on mind, right? Th this is the whole the whole gameplay of Regulation G that's new. Oh, is Chiyu. this game of how do I defend and get my restricted Pokemon in that setup position? Basically, I, I really like that. This is this is kind of like running singles and doubles, if that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> if you know, you know. It's just, singles oftentimes just feels like getting your sweeper in a position to go through, whereas VGC is more scrappy. But this feels like singles in doubles, and I really like it. I'm more partial to, to uh, singles myself. We're going to be seeing the U-turn potentially onto the Amoongus. I feel like you just want to get a KO at this point. You're itching for it, and I feel like even if you don't get the KO, if you Grassy Glide or Woodhammer into anything that even if it switches into the Calyrex, I feel like you just want to get damage out at this point. But it doesn't seem to be the play here. Fake Out's going to come out onto the Raging Bolt. That's one less turn for this Raging Bolt to work with. And Woodhammer is going to come out once more onto the Amoongus. It's going to be about three damage, maybe. Yeah. I... It took more damage itself. Yeah, we're going to see Raging Bolt flinch. I think we'll see the... Sp oh, no, we'll see the Palm Puff heal, heal back that Incineroar. I wasn't sure if we'd see the Palm Puff or the Spore that turn to try and just knock out Raging Bolt. But now, I don't know if Raging Bolt and Rillaboom can knock out this Namungus in one turn. So we'll have to see some really good damage calcs here and see if that's possible. It's going to be healing. It's going to be healing up a really decent amount as well thanks to this grass terrain and leftover. So it didn't have a turn to act, but it also recovered all the damage that it lost, or HP that it lost in that last turn. With that Calm Mind coming out, it's going to be a hard call to make for sure because you're expecting the Parting Shot to come out onto your Raging Bolt. That's why he's going to go for the Protect, I'm assuming at the very least. U-Turn's going to hit the Incineroar for almost nothing once more. Maybe he was expecting the Calyrex to come out. Um, that would be the Psychic Ghost Sniping on the Calyrex. Yes, Calyrex so. is a Psychic Ghost Pokemon. Also, correct myself, 500 points to the world, not 600 points. Thank you to chat for that. But yeah, that Calyrex being a Psychic Ghost type, really strong. And really checks into a lot of Pokemon pretty easily. As much as it checks really well, it also doesn't, like Incineroar, is very scary for it. Uh, a lot of Dark types are scary for it. Yeah. There's the knockoff, and there's the spore. Oh, that double great. combo, setting that Incineroar to sleep. I it's really, bedtime. I really feel like if if you got that U-turn off, if you if that Calyrex did switch in, it'd be you'd be in such a good position right now. But again, these players are just so aware of what kind of plays they might be trying to make. They're making mind games against their mind games in the future. It's incredible. Yeah, this is this is a format where you have to make the correct prediction. You have to figure out what's my opponent going to do, what can I do to check into that correctly. And then what do they think I'm going to do based with off of that so I can counter that instead. Yeah. And then they got to counter that. It's incredible. And, and it's exactly such a new seeing. format that who knows what the right move is at this point. It's very scary to kind of commit to anything. And again, this is my favorite point of any format. It's the figuring out phase. Because that's all I do. I just like to figure things out and try. Calm Mind is finally going to come out. I guess he's feeling comfortable sticking his head out of the dirt for a second here, like looking around like a, like a groundhog, seeing if you can get anything out of this. But is it going to come back to bite you? You are going to hit the knockoff. It's going to get the leftovers, unfortunately. And the spore. There's the spore. That there spore is, is incredibly strong. That is 
Huge. Both Pokemon are asleep. This is Austin's turn. If he wants to start laying on the damage, now is the time to do it. We'll see if he makes the switch. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a parting shot into the Raging Bolt this turn and really just knock mm -hmm. down Raging Bolt after taking that Calm Mind. At that point, though, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the switch for the Raging Bolt because it is asleep. You know, even if you switch back in, it's still be, it'll still be asleep, which is unfortunate, but you'd rather that than a Raging Bolt that's damaged and asleep and also minus, like, two or three. Yeah, I... I'm not sure what the correct play is here. This is such there a new none. format. Exactly. I, I think you got to leave Raging Bolt and hope it wakes up real quick. <laughs> just just uh, start really rolling those dice as the Calyrex comes out finally, ready to do some damage here. And we could see the Nasty Plot coming out too uh, next turn. Incineroar taking a little bit of damage here. Snarl, once again, is going to be the selection. And now you got to really, really hope your Raging Bolt got a lot of rest last night, so it's not going to need to take an extra turn to recover itself here. But with those moves committed, the Rage Powder is going to make any decision made basically nullified, as that's going to be forced onto the Amoongus, and the Nasty Plot is going to come out successfully. No one's going to be able to stop that one, and it appears they're still asleep. Yes, not going to wake up. Not going to wake up. Really you hate to see it. I mean, Incineroar will be guaranteed to wake up this turn, and I think it's been asleep for three turns already, so we'll see it wake up this turn, and we'll see now what it can do, but that Calyrex is set up, and that Calyrex is ready to start wreaking havoc. Let's see now. You got another turn to work with here. Raging Bolt is going to wake up, I believe? This is a... Uh, this is a Bradley is not right? having no. much luck with those sleep turns this game. He's been asleep all three turns every time. You hate to see it. Double There's another nasty, nasty Plot. We're at a plus four Calyrex, ready to wipe the floor. I don't know what you can do here. And Sarah gets up, gets the Snarl off. Oh, you can do that. <laughs> Forgot gets the damage, and now we're down to a plus three Calyrex. Nice. That's still a plus three Calyrex <laughs> that's ready to deal a ton of damage. And the Raging Bolt's still asleep, too. That's the that's the heartbreaking part of this. It should be able to get the Protect off, but again, assuming it still Incineroar is able to even get the Snarl off, you're still looking at a plus two Calyrex. It's just a very bad situation to be in all around. And Amoongus making it even harder since your uh, Raging Bolt doesn't have any spread moves. It's going to be forced to be hitting this Amoongus every turn. Yeah, the Raging Bolt does wake up after three turns of snoozing. But is it too little too late? Thunderclap misses because it had to Thunderclap into a Raging Bolt. It's got Draining Kiss to heal back up. That is some interesting tech. I forgot Shadow Rider got Draining Kiss. <laughs> That's an incredibly strong move to have on a plus two special attacker. Oh, and the raging or the parting shot gonna be forced into the Moongus once again because of the Rage Powder. And we're gonna see the switch in. Oh, I mean you want you might even think about the Rillaboom so you could try to get the fake out, but again, you can't even get the fake out because of Rage Powder. You can't U-turn. You can't Grassy Glide, Rage Powder, Rage Powder, Rage Powder. The best you could hope for is to KO the Amoongus, but if you even think about doing that, you're eating an Astral Barrage plus three. Yeah, it's it's a very scary state. Amoongus, like, that Shadow Rise in such a good position. There's that Thunderclap. That Thunderclap will do a lot, but if it's redirected back into Amoongus for another turn, I think we'll be in a position where Calyrex can just sweep the rest of the game. Unless this Amoongus just decides to not Rage Powder this turn and not Spore, unless it, maybe it Pollen Puffs itself, yeah. that's somehow, <laughs> then that's a very good situation to be in. But other, other than that, this really is just a hard place to be. You're going to switch out the Rillaboom, take it back in the Incineroar. Yes, you're going to reduce the attack, but again, neither of these are attackers on the side of Justin's field. So... It's something, but it's not exactly what you're looking for. Rage Powder comes up once more. I think it was a Dragon Pulse selected out by the Raging Bolt. But there's that Astro Barge. Yeah. How much will it do? Enough to KO, I'm pretty sure. Knocks out the Raging Bolt. Incineroar hangs on, which is a good thing to know. Mm -hmm. A plus three Astro Barrage does not knock out Incineroar. But, but it's now a plus four exactly. Astro Barrage. <laughs> This is, you could not ask for anything more on this Calyrex. It's going to be protected. It's going to be able to KO anything that threads it to it. It's even going to be able to heal itself. It's going to have an Amoongus that can heal it. And it's also going to have an Amoongus that can protect it with Rage Powder. And the so. other important thing to know, 
Neither side has used the terrestrialization yet. Oh, that's so true. We could see the terror. So I wouldn't true. be shocked if we see the Terra Fairy Calyrex and just eat up both those dark type attacks and hit another Astral Barrage. I think that would most likely just end up being the game if we see something like that. But while it's not happening, all you can do is keep your play going. Going for some of those fire moves to try to hit that Amoongus if it uses the Rage Powder. That might even be enough to KO based off the fact it's super effective. Plus with the reduced special defense coming out from Shi Yu. Protect Seeing is going to come out. So I'm assuming a Spore maybe? Or Double, double protect. protect. Okay. That's Try and just smart. fully bait out what the other team is going to do. And waste the, waste the fake out, which I don't disagree with there. That's just a really smart play all around. You see what your opponent's doing, you see what they were thinking about doing, and that allows you to get into their head and make some decisions based off of that as well. So. Yeah. The, the important thing to know here with Overheat is that now that Shadow Rider cannot... We'll take the Overheat, but Chiyu didn't get the special attack drop because it was hit to protect. So now with this next turn coming up, we're going to have the GU going to commit to the overheat once again. You know, it's going to hit the Moongus, but this time you're not too upset about that fact. Unfortunately, however, uh, I think that's still going to allow the Alsha Barrage to come out. Actually, that Whoa. is going to be a KO. Okay. That's... I know GU was powerful and you had that special defense drop, but wow, to one shot the Moongus is a is impressive, but here's the plus four Astral Barrage. And that's gonna be... Knocks out the Chiyu, yeah. takes out the Incineroar. All that's left is Rillaboom here. And with with Justin still having three Pokemon to work with, it's just looking pretty difficult to get anything done here. You're gonna have your Rillaboom as your last man standing, but it looks to be the telltale sign of a concluded battle, but a very hard fought one. Sort of, we still don't even know what Austin brought as his fourth Pokemon. He could have anything back there. Is it the Raging Bolt? And there's the fourth. What an incredible, what an incredible first round of Swiss. Very good games all around. I feel like if any of these games come even close to the level of play we saw in this first one, we're going to have a great day. And if we're going to have a great day today, I think we're going to have a great weekend. <laughs> yeah. That was an incredible first set. I mean, both players played their hearts out. And it's only getting started. They have a few, tons of time to bounce back for Bradley after that first loss. But he played incredibly well. His switches were great. He just got put into a position where that double spore and that full three turns of sleep. You hate to see that. Oh, Those three turns yeah. of sleep are absolutely brutal. And it can change a game completely. And what's, what's on top of that as well, like there were a couple of moments, of course, there we observed this play, that play might have worked, might have not worked. But ultimately, especially with the new format, new Pokemon, it's really hard to make any decisions. But you have to just make something. You have to go for something. And oftentimes, it's exactly what your opponent wants you to do. And you end up putting yourself in a bad situation after. Yeah, I mean, again, both incredible positions. I think we are starting to see why Shadow Rider is being played so much. Yeah. As much as it is a Pokemon that hasn't seen success, it's hard to say that it's not a good Pokemon. Very difficult. Shadow Rider <laughs> is so strong, and you really have to bring something just to counter, sh counter Shadow Rider. Mm -hmm. That Terra Fairy blocking all of the Dark-type moves, you have to have a Steel-type ready. There's not a lot of strong Steel-type attackers right now. So do you bring Golden Go? Do you bring... What other options do you bring? It will be it will be interesting to see how the meta here at St. Clair evolves over these next four days. And I think this is just a start to the to the rest of the weekend. Absolutely, and with all of those different decisions that you have to make, again, it just really emphasizes the beauty that is competitive Pokemon. There's so many decisions to make. There's so many options available to you. There's never one right answer, unless it's bringing Calyrex, which we've seen after Game 1. But ladies and gentlemen, while we get ready for Game 2, we hope to see you there. We're going to send it to a quick break. Don't go anywhere. A lot more action coming up soon.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have game two lined up for you, and I didn't lie, okay? These games are only going to get better from here. Coming up for our next match, we're going to have Rowan versus Nick. And just taking a look at these lovely, lovely, lovely team sheets, I can already see something that might make a certain somebody who's not here today very happy. I'm seeing a Farigaraf and Ursaluna Blood Moon already on here. And let me see, is that a trick room? That absolutely is, of course, trick room on the Farigaraf. Whether or not we're going to see that lead, of course, you got him a ride on to work with. You got some stronger threats, but it's something in the back pocket. Yeah, I mean, let's dissect these teams. Rowan's got a very interesting team here. We're seeing Mari that Maride on Iron Hands combo with Quark Drive and Assault <laughs> Vest to get that extra damage onto that Iron Hands. We're mm. seeing the Blood Moon for Rigoraf combo, that strong Trick Room mode, and we're seeing Volcarona and Whimsicott as the other two Pokemon. Whimsicott is that all star supporter mon that's coming, it's got the Tailwind. It's got the Encore and Protect to really just cause a lot of chaos. And we have Volcarona, which is an interesting Pokemon. But if you let Volcarona set up with a Quiver Dance, Volcarona will do tons of damage the rest of the game. And one thing I'm noticing about this kind of lineup here on Rowan's side of things, while it might not be relevant going to the next matchup, if I can at least contextualize what we saw in the last game, all of these moves and all of these like duos would basically, if not one-shot, but do very significant damage to an Amoongus who's just tanking, because these moves hit neutral. A lot of the moves that we're seeing in the previous one were ineffective or weak, but these ones will just punch right through it. It's not going to get reduced, even though it's bulky, high special defense. Uh, you know, Ursula Blood Moon, Iron Hands, yeah. these are going to be heavy hitters. So we're seeing some of the anti-wall um, tech to protect people's restricted mons coming out in some of these uh, strong combos. Oh, absolutely. And these are all incredibly strong Pokemon. But looking at Nick's team, actually something interesting, no Incineroar is this matchup. I was really? Saying, oh oh my god, you're right. All the time. We're seeing neither Incineroar <laughs> on either side. Looking at Nick's team here, we see Raging Bolt coming back out. The Urshifu Rapid Strike, another strong player. Whimsicott's also on Nick's side here. We're also seeing Gothitelle, a Pokemon we don't see very often, Are but a serious? very strong Pokemon with that Shadow Tag ability, locking a Pokemon in play. Chiyu is out here as mm. well, Chiyu being just a great tech Pokemon. And then we have Terrapagos, who pairs really well with Chiyu, with that Stellar type and that Terra, sh and that Terra Shell ability, mm -hmm. with the Choice Specs and the Terra Star Storm to do spread damage when it's Terrasalized, the whole combination of things that you pair it with the Chiyu that's going to lower the special defense of everything, not a lot of things live Terrapagos. It's it would be it's basically like what we saw in the previous one. The strategy is get a wall set up, get your restricted mon to set up, and once it is, just click the win button over and over again. But sometimes you only get to hit the win button once or twice. That's why so much effort goes into making sure when you press it, it really counts. Yeah. And the Gothitelle is interesting here because we saw in the last game oh that game was so much about I need to switch my Pokemon exactly. here, switch my Pokemon here. But now Gothitelle's here, and Gothitelle's going to lock everything in and slow things down. The interesting thing we're seeing here is the lack of actually Maridon counters from Nick's team. No Rillaboom to set up that grass terrain to shut off the electric terrain. But here we go into our first match here. We are seeing that Chi Yu Gothitelle lead versus the Maridon and Iron Hands lead. I'm going to swap these teams. Just for <laughs> nice, keep it consistent. I keep it consistent. That. Gothitelle again. Competitive viability side. Just looking at the Pokemon, the, the moves, the aesthetic, I love Gothitelle. I'm very excited to see this Pokemon making its debut here today. And paired up with Chiyu, is there a specific thing you're looking out for that make these Mons work well together, or is it just uh, something of circumstance? I think Chiyu's just here to do damage, and Gothitelle's here to make sure things can't run away from Chiyu. It's got that Choice Scarf, it is going to look for that attack really quickly. And Gothitelle, as we know, is a, actually a regional winning Pokemon. Wolfie has, bring Gothitelle to many has brought Gothitelle to tournaments and has won with it. So it's interesting to see. We're seeing the Terra, er, Terra Ground on the Chiyu to actually block a lot of those electric type attacks that are going to come out from this the other side of the field. Uh, so it seems that this uh, Chiyu is basically anti-electric. With that Terra Blast as Terra well, Blast, Terra Ground. That's going to be massive out of shape. And goes down. With the special defense reduction, plus the super effectivity, plus Chiyu's stats are nothing to scoff at. It's no. really good. That is not surprising. Honestly, I can't, I can't say I'm surprised to see that come out. Turn one, we're going to see Maridon go down immediately. And we're going to see the Ursaluna come out in response. Yeah, and I think that's what we have to watch out for Chiyu here. Is Chiyu, if it's Terra Ground, Maridons are uh, pretty scared of it, I'd have to say. And that Gothel locked it in place, so really, the Maridon didn't have Protect, that Maridon was sort of forced to take that blow. 
you know what I'm also realizing? Tell me, is there a single situation where you don't want that to happen? Like, it doesn't matter that, of course, it's an electric type, so it's going to do even more. But if that was a water type, if that was, uh, I don't know, psychic type, it doesn't matter. You're still going to do a lot of damage and might even knock it out. So it's a counter, but it's also very good against everything else. Yeah, I mean, we did see Terra Ghost Chiyu in our last matchup, so now we're seeing the Terra Ground. We're seeing how versatile Chiyu is with that Terra Block. Yeah. We're seeing the Terra up onto the Iron Hands to go into that Ground type, or go into that Water type. Probably feeling the Terra Blast Ground type move. I'm not surprised. It now perfectly walls Chiyu here. Here is the Helping Hand. This, I would not be surprised if we see another KO here onto the Ursaluna, even if it doesn't go. It does go for the Terra Blast once more. Whether it's going to go into the Iron Hands, yes, it's going to target that one with the Helping Hand and the Special Damage Reduction. It's actually not, that's a, that's really impressive how tanky Iron Hands is. Looking at his stats right now, I'm not surprised, 231. No. Iron Hands is a very bulky Pokemon yeah. and knocks out the Chiyu, gets the Drain, with the Drain Punch, and it's now probably gonna go back, actually does not get as much health as I thought it would. Still gets a good bit of health there, heals back just up a little bit, and now Chiyu is down. Chiyu knocked out, so that's just heavy hitter for heavy hitter, but with Terrapa Ghost in the back line, uh, Raging Bolt gonna be coming out next. I like that strategy. Keep your Terrapagos in the back pocket, but seems still deciding here. Maybe not. Maybe he is gonna commit for something else. In either case, both of these competitors, uh, I'm gonna stick with the thematic word, both of these trainers doing a lot of great work to even out the playing field for themselves. The first turns here coming out are gonna be very strong for both of them giving themselves a strong lead, and now you just gotta make the most with the remnants. Yeah, I think we're also seeing how different even Raging Bull can be played. In the last set, we saw that Calm Mindset. In this set, we were seeing that Electroweb move set. Mm. Electroweb trying to slow things down, try to slow down the battle. Volt Switch to switch out easier. It still has Thunderclap, and it's still got Draco, it's got Draco Meter to do a ton of damage. So these Raging Bolt sets are very diverse as well. So I'm now trying to figure out what the speed differences are here are going to be looking like. So we got the Ursaluna and the Iron Hands out. You might not even need the Electro Web. And with the Helping Hands, I was thinking, can you go for a Helping Hands play? And it seems to be the case. With the Electro Web is a spread move, correct? Yes, Electro Web so is a spread move. Might even go for that still. We're going for the Bolt Switch. Like that. To Does get the knockout yeah. and now can switch into, my assumption is that Terrapagos. What a good switch there. And again, this is where having faith in your Pokemon to do what you want them to do, it pays off in dividends. You can't hesitate too much, or else you'll give openings to your opponent where you really shouldn't have any. Uh, so that's gonna be Iron Hands out as well. Terrapo Ghost is gonna be coming out. Terra Shift coming to play. Beautiful transformation now. And now, with Rowan down to his last Pokemon, Ferrograph is going to be that last Pokemon. And while it's no, it's no Maridon, it's still a threat. Yeah, Ferrograph, Ferrograph, Blood Moon, Ursuna will always be a threat if they can get that Trick Room off. The question now is, are we going to see that Helping Hand into the Terra Blast oh, Star Storm, taunt, taunt. which would do a ton of damage? The, but we are going to see actually the Trick Room into the Hyper Beam. The, oh, so uh, wait, Ferrograph just like Hyper Beam you're saying? Or is this... Uh, Terrapagos is going Hyper Beam. Okay. Oh, that is something to, to note. We are out of Terra. We did That's see uh, Nick use his Terra earlier, so he does not have it. Oh! Here, but the Hyper Beam knocks out the Ursaluna. That's a lot more damage than I was expecting. That is a ton of damage. I mean, Hyper Beam, again, you're looking at that 150 special, base special attack. It does a lot of damage. It's something you don't see a lot in competitive. But now that it's here and you can use it, the Terra Blast and the Ferrograph into the Terra Shell. Terra Shell is an interesting move. It'll make any of the first hits do not very effective damage. And while that's definitely helpful here, it really is just going to stall the inevitable as now we're going to see the Surrender coming out from Rowan. Nick had such a great momentum push starting things off. I really like how he kind of took control of that battle. Like I said, that first game felt like we were looking at singles in VGC, but now it feels like we're in VGC again, where every turn something's getting knocked out. This is yes. what happens when you don't have Incineroar and Amoongus kind of everywhere causing problems. Yeah, this is a very explosive battle, and really, Nick got off to a great start with that Gothitel Chiyu lead, as it meant Maradon couldn't do anything, and Maradon was forced to just sit there and take the full power attack. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. How does Rowan adapt? Who does Rowan lead in instead now? Uh, I would very much expect to see... I mean, yeah, your Mariadon is basically hard countered by one of the most potent strikers on your opponent's team. It is a little bit... You don't want to just not take your Mariadon, but at the same time, you might. It's or you, At the very least, I don't think you want to lead with it. I think you want to find an opportunity to switch it in. But then again, um, will you even have that opportunity to switch it in? Can you knock out that Chiyu before you can find an opportunity to switch in your Mariah or really get forced to beforehand? There's a lot of things you got to be worried about in a situation like yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, this is the first battle. These Both these players are sort of fingering each other out, doing this little dance of what's going to happen. And now we'll go into the second game. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't lean Mariah on. Yeah. I think you we could see... The Ursula Blood Moon lead first here. That's a really powerful lead. Those are two very powerful Pokemon that really, once he gets the Trick Room set up, be hard for a lot of these other Pokemon on Nick's team who don't really want to work in Trick Room. I wouldn't be surprised as well um, if you want to go for something a little bit more flexible. Seeing the Urshifu come out too, um, if you're expecting some switches on, uh, on Rowan's side of things, I feel like that Urshifu... Of course, going through Protect as well is always nice, but it is just such a potent hitter. There's very few, very few situations where Urshifu's hitting into something and it's not knocking it out or at least taking it down to half. So you want something reliable and you want something flexible with honestly good typings defensively with decent enough bulk. You can't go wrong with Urshifu, but it seems we're going to be leading this time uh, we'll with a Whimsicott versus Chiyu and Terrapagos. This is a very interesting lead here. Very small Pokemon to lead big Yeah, it's a very small Pokemon Trapagos there, but it only gets into these bigger Pokemon as it keeps going up this terrestrialization chart. The Whimsicott here is really interesting. It's got that Encore move. Encore is a really interesting tech mm, move where yep. if you're forced to make a more defensive play turn one, that Whimsicott will lock in that Encore and force you not to be able to do anything. So a game like this here, okay, so he did end up taking the Whimsicott himself as well as his Raging Bolt on the side of Nick. That's what we're going to be seeing here, but what Rowan took, can't really say for sure. Whimsicott with that band, I don't... Do you switch it in? Because I don't know if you are if you are expecting to take any... I, I think if you're going to take damage, it's not going to be enough to KO, so you would kind of be wasting out that focus sash, but I think that's going to be the play regardless. I wonder what he's going to try to get with this here. I feel like this is another standoff situation where there is really no right play. You just got to try to figure out what your opponent might have been trying to accomplish here. But with that protect coming out, can't same surprise. Encore is in play though. Yeah, I think, I think maybe that's the reason to bring out Whimsicott and maybe why we saw the protect from Volcarona there is this Whimsicott comes out, and now you can't Quiver Dance with Volcarona. Mm -hmm. If you get that Quiver Dance and then you get Encore into Quiver Dance, you're just sitting there setting up but not being able to <laughs> fire back. So we'll see what happens here. That Snarl is very annoying. It's going to lower the special attack of everything. Really makes Volcarona have, be forced to almost switch out sooner rather than later. The one interesting thing with Whimsicott, Whimsicott is not an attacker. Whimsicott's right. job is to sit there and be annoying. So it's the question of how soon do you want to deal with Whimsicott? Exactly. And one thing I'm also recognizing right now is with that Tailwind coming out from uh, Rowan's Whimsicott, uh, you know, Encore threatening both Pokemon on the side of Rowan's field, and that's exactly why we're probably going to be seeing that switch out come out from now. You want something that you are happy with seeing do the same move over and over again, and Iron Hands is a pretty solid bet. So that's going to be the next Mon coming out. Terra onto the Chiyu, I believe. Uh, did he? Yes, that's going to be the Chiyu. Did he predict the switch in? Is he going to go for it? He might have He might have read the Iron Hand switch in or the Maridon switch in. There's only two real Pokemon that you got to worry about, right? They're yeah. both weak to ground. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But it's going to protect itself. But was that from... Oh! Okay, so Chiyu hit into the Whimsicott. Yeah. All right. Actually, oh, no, it was Encore Snarl. into the... I would assume it was Encore into the... Volcarona there and try and reduce that Volcarona's offensive capabilities. Mm -hmm. But that Terra Ground, maybe he wants to force the Terra Water actually into the Iron Hands. Make the Iron Hands scared. Make the Iron mm -hmm. Hands overreact. And now that that Terra Ground is out, it's a really interesting play now. Do you, are you afraid? Is there any threat on the side of Rowan's field? to Nick besides this Maridon and um, Iron Hands. 
because the Volcarona requires at least one or two turns to really become something scary, especially you got a Terrapagos, you got a Chiyu, not really worried about any of those moves coming up from that Volcarona until it's really too boosted. So I feel like as long as you get those heavy hitters gone, you have a lot less to worry about. And speaking of heavy hitters gone, the heavy hitters are coming up to play now. And the Hadron engine, that's going to be the cork boost or cork drive onto the uh, Iron Hands as well. But what did the Chiyu go for this turn? Did you get the lead? Tailwind's going to come out and ensure that it's always going to be acting first going forward through these next couple of turns. But it's going to be another snarl feeling out what the plays are going to be coming out for, and reducing the special attack. I like that play, but now with the, all of the threats and all the cards kind of laid on the table, it's time to make some decisions. Oh, Chi lives on 13 health! Oh my goodness. So, that must mean that that knockout on Chiyu is a roll and is not guaranteed. That is scary to think about. Chiyu is here, locked in a Snarl. So now the question is, do you keep Chiyu in and you keep Snarling, or do you switch to something else and, for, and maybe keep Chiyu for the later end game. I'm noticing now, yeah, that is a choice scarf on the Chiyu. With the Tailwind coming into effect, I, you would wish it would be a choice specs at this point, just so you can get some more potency on your damage. But at least, hey, nothing's going to outspeed this guy with that cherry scarf into the Tailwind. So it's going to get to at least do one more action before it might get KO'd. But with Maridon switching back into the Whimsicott, if he did go for the Terra Blast, it's not going to be very effective here. But with that Snarl, Iron Hands is going to dodge it with... Oh, the double oh, miss! Oh, how? I didn't even know it happened. Was it a low accuracy move? In any case, Moon yeah, Blast is going to do Yeah, I think damage. Snarl is a 95% chance to hit. So you hate to see that double miss there. And it's going to KO. Absolutely Chiyu. crucial. I will double check to make sure that I am right with that 95% accuracy. <laughs> Chiyu is going to fall. And this is exactly what I'm talking about here. This is really a threat completely nullified for Rowan. There isn't really anything that threatens the uh, threatens the Maridon or Iron Hands to any degree that the Chiyu did. You still have the Terrapagos, as we saw with the Hyper Beam that it has. It's a pretty strong threat in and of itself, but without that Terra, you don't have to worry about those Star Storms or anything else. No, it's still a strong move, but it won't be spread. So. The question is, do you lock into Terra Star Storm knowing it won't be spread anymore? Or do you try and think of what else you can do? That Moon Blast will do a ton of damage to that Iron Hands. Mm -hmm. Is this your chance to remove Iron Hands from the field? That is the question. It's using Drain Punch, and Drain Punch will just get it more health back if you don't deal with it sooner rather than later. I really like this kind of uh, switch of operations from Nick here. You lost your main uh, potent threat. You don't even really have to play too uh, trickily anymore. You just gotta start hitting. Start yeah. knocking Pokemon out. Do as much damage as you can. Give your opponent less options. And that's exactly what he's gonna do here. He's gonna take out the Whimsicott. That's just one less big problem to deal with. Your opponent only, nicks, only has three left. Um, but with that shell coming to play, it's going to significantly reduce the damage coming out, but it's going to switch back out. That's going to be the Volcarona coming out at the very least, and as well as the Maridon. Those are the Pokemon that are going to be in play right now, facing down this Terrapagos and Whimsicott. Seeing now Volcarona coming out, I'm curious what kind of plays he could try to go for here. You don't want to go for anything... It's, it's, it's scary because he already knows about the Hyper Beam, and yeah. came out and came into play last time. I think it's just really going to be like a call-out game of are you going to Hyper Beam right now or not? And then yeah. getting the Protect off and then using uh, Quiver Dance when he's when you're expecting him to do something else. Well, right now that Terrapagos is locked into Terra Star Storm. Oh, it's got exactly. the choice back You're on. absolutely right on that. Completely so do you, I think he's looking at making the switch here, switching into the Raging Bolt. I mean, Raging Bolt's really strong and a great counter from Maridon. Bulky, do a lot of damage. We'll see if Whimsicott stays in, what Whimsicott does here. I think it protected, or no, it doesn't have protect, does it? Oh, it does. Okay, I'm not, I knew I'm not crazy. It does have protect, here's the Terra. Terra's gonna be going out onto the Maridon. Terra Electric Maridon, this Maridon's gonna start doing damage. More damage than it already has been, which is actually not a lot. I don't think Maridon's hit anything yet, has it? Maridon's not hit anything yet. <laughs> I haven't seen how much damage this Maridon can do. And now we'll get a look at what it can really do. 
Mm -hmm. Terra Electric, Electro Drift, not super effective. But it's still gonna be I mean, actually very harmful. Not very effective, it's not. That's still a ton of damage. All things considered, that's really, really solid damage. What's important as well about the um, Terra there is it's no longer Dragon type, which means those Dragon moves from Raging Bolt are no longer going to be a threat. So yeah. it's not very effective versus not very effective moves I've kept from these Pokemon right now. I wouldn't be shocked if we actually see Maradon leave here. It's locked into that Electro Drift, and as much as it did, maybe a quarter damage to that Raging Bolt, you don't want to stick in. You don't want Maradon to take more damage than necessary. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens here. Goes to the Tailwind, resetting up that speed stat, which is what Wimscott does here. It really gets control of the speed. There's the Electro Drift staying in. Coming out onto... Wimscott, Wimscott wants to get it out. Wimscott with the Focus Sash, exactly. it's still up, but you had to take it out. Focus Sash is still in play. Honestly, I forgot about that. He was protecting all those turns to make sure that it wouldn't be uh, taking any damage. But now that has finally been cracked, it's going to go down. It's just the Terrapagos in play. Electroweb going to do some work to reduce the speed of this Pokemon. But I think the Tailwind is still up for Rowan? Yeah, Nick re just reset up Tailwind. So now he has Tailwind plus minus one with Electroweb. Gotcha. It will be an interesting round here. So he's going to have the speed advantage now, but he wasn't working with it for quite a while. Terrapagos is going to be coming out, and now you're going to get the reset here. You're going to be able to choose between using your Star Storm or Hyper Beam. I, mm, I mean, with the Iron Hand still in play, a switch in would be pretty devastating. That's the Steel Electric type on the Iron Hands? Uh, no, Iron Hands is fighting, fighting Electric. Fighting Electric, okay. So, so really, going into Earth Power here, Locking in Earth Power is probably a great move here. Everything on this field is going to be weak to that Earth Power and not going to really want to take a big Earth Power. This Trapagos is slower, so the question is, does Electro Drift one-shot? If Electro Drift doesn't one-shot, you're in a little bit of a scarier position. It actually probably will. Probably does. It's at a great... Yeah. There, no. Rhydon's right leaving. Rhydon's right getting out of town. It's going home. <laughs> So this could be the Earth Power play that we were expecting to come out, but it is low, so I guess it's the call-out of did you not go for anything here, and you just get to take it out for free. So that's just like absorbing one hit, allowing another turn for Volcarona to get something done, while forcing the move to go onto a different Pokémon. Um, Electroweb is going to come out once more, reduce the speed of that Volcarona, but I'm curious, did it go for Quiver Dance or did it go for some damage? Quiver Dance, it That's wants to try to get some damage in here. It's probably going to go down next turn, so I think it just wants to go down with a fight. It's going to get some speed, but I'm pretty sure it's still going to be too slow. Oh, yeah, that Volcarona is still at a minus one. As much as Volcarona's Leftovers. speed stat is, is really high, not as high as some of the other threats it's got to go up against. I saw Tailwind Peter out. I'm assuming that would be Rowan's if Nyx was the more recent one coming out. Electric Terrain is going to come into play once more, increasing the electric type damage. And now you're just kind of scoping out, getting a feel for what might work, what might not. No status changes except for that Volcarona, which is still minus one on the speed, but plus to the special defense and attack. So it actually might, I, I might have spoken a little too soon, it might actually survive some attacks here this turn. It might be able to get out one or two more attacks before it goes down. And those are plus one attacks as well. These trainers putting a lot of thought to the next play, and I really can't blame you when you consider all that's on the line here today. But the Star Storm coming out, taking down the Maridon, wow. such a strong Pokemon. This is the impact of getting to go first. Some might say speed is everything. Doesn't matter how good your Pokemon is, if it doesn't get to act, Electroweb coming out once again onto this Volcarona, and I think another and Volcarona good versus the world, world tier. Volcarona's gonna keep trying to Quiver Dance get to a position where it can knock out something. If it wasn't but, for the Electrowebs, it actually might have been able to pull something off here. But the fact that it's going to have to act the last every turn makes it really difficult. Yeah. And we'll probably see the Protect from Volcarona this turn. Maybe. I think Tailwind is up for at least one more turn here, so we'll see what oh, they do. Oh, that's true. There's the Protect. Trying to bait out that Tailwind. 249 onto the Raging Volk. What's the speed of Volcarona? 271. I don't know. Would it be faster with the minus one? I don't think so. I'd be very surprised. But only time will tell. Yeah, I think with the minus one, it, it'll be close. 
it will be close on a lot of these Pokemon. I don't think it will be faster than Raging Bolt. But it's also getting special defense buffs as well. True. So do you go for another Quiver Dance then? I think you have to start attacking. Yeah, I really think so. But at the same time, it is... Because if you want to get greedy, you could go for another Quiver Dance into Protect and then start attacking. But that is... That's really stretching it. Yeah, I think you've got to start hitting through. And you've got to find a way. Okay, so Crap goes still faster. faster. Doesn't get the knockout, but that Electro Web might. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So. That's going to do it for round two. Nick taking the 2-0 victory. I'm sure that the speed were just single digits within each other. Um, maybe maybe a couple of tens here and there. But it, I, it, that game came down to a lot of different factors. The tailwinds, the priorities, the speeds, the, the typings, the special stats, and the defenses. So close of a game. And you can see it in the face of the trainers there. It was a very close, very hard-fought battle. But ultimately today, Nick is going to come out on top. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see more of these players down the line this weekend. They both played incredibly well. These are both very interesting, exciting teams. As much as it was a 2-0 victory, that was not a close game. That second round was not a close game. Both these players fought back-to-back -back incredibly hard. And I'm excited to see where they go in the future. And this is a great representation for the rest of the weekend on the power of Maridon and the power of Terrapagos. That Maridon, it gets the Electro Drift, which if it hits into something super effectively, it does a ton of damage. And then we're looking at the power of Terrapagos, even without Terra, there's still 120 base power, special attack, Terra Star Storm that's going to... Can't miss! Exactly. It's the power it's... of some of these uh, super strong moves like Solar Beam. Like, it's got that power level and can't miss and will just keep hitting as hard as possible. And one thing we didn't even account for, like, we didn't even see those uh, Star Storms coming out with the spread. That was just single target. And it was still such a huge threat that game all around. Like you said, just because it was a 2-0 doesn't mean that those games were one-sided at all. They were still very, very close for both trainers. And ultimately, again, Nick is going to come out on top. But that's going to be Swiss round two kind of coming to a conclusion. I'm sure there might be a couple of games still going on outside. But while we get ready, get prepared for round three, we're going to send it to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. But again, the action is just getting started. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you all very soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to round three of the Swiss pools. We only got one more round after this, I believe. So this is where things really start to get shaken up. We are in round three and we're going to be looking at Matthew versus Zane. We're taking a look at those team sheets a little bit ago and already seeing some interesting things coming out here. This GU, for example, running psychic. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what the motivation, I guess, you know, we got some shadow riders going around. Maybe there's some reasons for that there, but a lot of different interesting choices coming out from both of these players. Yeah, we're seeing seeing some different Pokemon that are playing differently into how we've seen them before. We are seeing Terrapagos come back on Matthew's side, joined by Chiyu. This Chiyu is running that Psychic instead of the Protect, which makes it a little bit different. We're seeing actually our first appearance of the hero Fluttermane coming back, finally. Fluttermane back oh. in the game. <laughs> yes, Fluttermane making its grand return. Uh, Terrapagos is also running Dark Pulse uh, with the choice specs, though, so it's going to be still pretty potent. Um, I, I really feel like this is the realm of the psychic dark ghost. Like, you're not seeing, like, those elemental yeah. uh, typings being very, uh, like, prominent right now. You really do have to get into the realm of the mind um, in this standard format right now. So a lot of Pokemon trying to make the most of those typings. Yeah, one other interesting Pokemon to really note out on Matthew's team here is Mian Shao. Mm -hmm. Mian Shao is a wild Pokemon that, you know, doesn't seem a lot of play, but it has access to Wide Guard, has access to Faint to block out Protects. Mm. It's got that Fake Out, it's got Close Combat. It really is a great support mod for a lot of spread attacks, which we have with Calyrex, we have with Ice Rider, who we haven't seen. Also, it does have Inner Focus, which I believe makes it immune to flinching, so Fake Out won't matter to this one. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Inner Focus also blocks out Intimidate. So it's a really a, it's just a really versatile mod that, you know, isn't the most used, but does have its uses. Exactly. We're also let's look over more at Zane's team. Zane is running that Calyrex Shadow, but a different Shadow Rider. We are looking that this time instead of having a choice item, it's running the Focus Ash with Astral mm -hmm. Broad, Psy Shock Protect, and Nasty Plot. So still have that set up. But it's running Psychic now instead of that Draining Kiss move. Yeah, so this Psy Shock coming into play, it's going to want to hit Pokemon with weaker defense than weaker special defense, which was a little confusing to me initially. But the more I started to think about it now, a lot of the Pokemon we are seeing are just bulky in the special defense department because special defense is just very prominent. It's yeah. a lot more prominent. You'll see attackers um, still relevant right now, but they're going to be attacking Pokemon with low defense. All the Pokemon here really don't lean into their defense much, except for maybe Iron Hands. So, a lot of weak defensive Pokemon running around in this format right now, so honestly, the Psyshock Shock making a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. The other important thing, Zane's team here, running that Tornadus, running this Pokemon we've seen on and oh. off with the Tailwind, Bleak Wind Storm, Protect, and Rain Dance. <laughs> Bleak Wind Storm I have a love-hate relationship with. I feel like I've mo missed it more than I've used it, but it's still a very great move to have. As we jump into Swiss Rounds 3 here, Matthew on our bottom side, Zane on our top side. And Sinner and Urshifu lead versus the Chi Yu. Mian Shao. Mian Shao. Mian Shao, great Pokemon. Love I think it. it's such a cool Pokemon and really shuts down a lot of the Pokemon on the other side here. Yeah, and this looks like to be the, the physical fighting Kung Fu League. We got Urshifu, Mian Shao, and Incineroar. You got yeah. like Kung Fu, you got Karate, and you got Pro Wrestling uh, all in the field. And you got a fish as well. Yeah, Incineroar ready to, maybe ready to take down Logan Paul, or maybe join Logan Paul, depending on how, if he's evil or good on that wrestling front here. But we'll see what happens here. I think Mian Shao is in a great position, puts a lot of pressure onto Incineroar. But do you want to save it so you can deal with maybe that spread moves that will come out later? All I know is that this uh, this Incineroar didn't bring any prime to hydrate this uh, this Chi Yu. It's going to, in fact, try to do the quite opposite and try to really starve this one out. This uh, this Chi Yu is going to be a pretty big threat, I feel like, in this game. It has been in the last couple ones we've been seeing. It's also running Terra type Ghost, which actually might be a little bit relevant here since we are seeing some fighting types um, starting to come into play. Fighting type moves as well. And we're also going to see the fighting type Ghost on the Urshifu as well. This is a Rapid Strike Urshifu. I know there is a single strike out there um, in the pool right now, so this is going to be the more standard one. But we are going to see the Psychic come out, and that is going to hit into the Ghost typing. Uh, so it's not going to be... Oh, the U-turn's coming out in retaliation, so it's going to take a considerable amount of damage, but it's going to retreat and come back in uh, with a different Pokemon. We're going to see Zane. He's... I mean, if he didn't lead with the Amoongus, I'm not sure if he's going to be running it, but he's running the Incineroar. He's also probably running 
the Amoongus. Amoongus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also know he has Calyrex in the back. We, we also seeing Iron Hands here. My guess is that Calyrex is yep. probably that fourth Pokemon. You want that support move. Chiyu hanging on by a thread. Lose its Choice Scarf now. So now Chiyu is free to do whatever it wishes. But it's probably going to go the down. the chaos that it so desires upon the world. It'll probably go down before it gets the chance to, unfortunately. It is going to switch back. Uh, it's going to switch out with the Tornadus, it seems he's thinking. He does have... So he doesn't have a Rain Setter. But he's brought Rain Dance with the Prankster, of course, on the Tornadus. So he's going to be a self-sufficient Rain Setter. Um, no other weather coming to play. No one really riding um, with Coridon uh, at this tournament today. So no Sun Setters, really. Chiyu's going to get taken out, swapping in that Terrapagos. Normal type into these two. A little bit scary, but it should ultimately work out. In the end, it is a normal type, and it should still have that shell. So unless they double commit into it, which won't even be possible with that Incineroar switching out already, we're going to see the Urshifu come back. And Mien Xiao probably, I mean, it could have gone for a close combat, yeah. But with that ghost typing, it's going to completely block that coming out. Drain Punch in retaliation for the Iron Hands. Not going to heal, but still going to do a lot of damage. Now, some really great switches there, and Zayden is playing really effectively, moving his pieces in and out, and hasn't taken a ton of damage. He did burn the Shadow, the Ghost-type Terra on that Urshifu, but he's in a great position. No Pokemon down yet. He's got Incineroar in the back that he can switch in when he needs to, and he's ready to deal a ton of damage. The interesting thing to look at with this Trap Ghost that makes it different is it has Sleep Talk as a move. Sleep Talk's an interesting move. It is actually a great counter to Amoongus, as if you put it to sleep, it's just going to sleep talk, hit one of those other three moves that it's got in the back there, and you'll be in a lot of trouble. And I like that too, because it's basically trading out a Protect or something like that for the opportunity to make sleep irrelevant to you. And we're going to see the uh, Terrasolation come out already with that. Is that a... Yeah, that is the st Stellar, Stellar Terra Terrapagos. Okay. So now that Terra Starstorm is going to be in that full spread damage, so we'll see what happens. Full power mode activated on this Terrapagos. <laughs> We're gonna see that huge threat coming out into full play here. Although without that Chi Yu, I don't know if Iron Hands would go down in a single hit. Um, maybe with it out, it might, uh, because of the special damage or special defense reduction there. Uh, but close combat, close combat. definitely make sure it's Oh, and the crit, that crit probably matters. Now, if you weren't in a one-shot territory, you definitely are. So, oh, there's there the Terra Star yeah. Storm. Can it work out here? I would not be surprised if we see a double KO coming out. And no, not even the single huh? KO. Wow. What? I thought that would have done a lot more, but I maybe that's shocked. just the lack of Chi Yu. Really? 195 on the special tag. I'm not sure if that's regular for a Terrapagos. I was, I'm shocked. I mean, spread moves do do reduce damage in doubles. Granted, we saw how damaging the single target Star Storm was before with the spread move, with becoming spread move, it is going to be reduced, I believe, by 50%. So I can't say I'm, I mean, if, if that is the case, if that's going to be the factor here with the base power. I don't know if the base power gets up. I don't exactly yeah, know how this It would works. be reduced by 25%, I'm pretty sure. Okay. But, I but. mean, we're looking at a very defensive Iron Hands. Yeah, that Iron Hands special defense is pretty up there. Does it's going to be a hard battle if Trapagos isn't doing that much damage. It didn't even do half to an Iron Hands. Have to figure out how to get it up beside Chiyu in the right position. Tornado's going to come up here. Hopefully Tornado's will do some damage. Eats the fake out. Close combat by Mian Xiao finishes off in Cineroar. This Mian Xiao is carrying. <laughs> yeah, and I think you have to play around the Mian Xiao with Wide Guard. Wide Guard is very scary. That's a very this me I hey, you know, you know me, alright? I love me, my creative Pokemon strategies, usages. I think this Mian Xiao might be one of the most clever inclusions I've seen here at St. Clair's tournaments and I really like the rationale behind it. It's not a random pick. It is basically fine-tuned and specifically picked up for this format. It is eventually going to fall and the Chi is going to make its return. With this Tornadus leading out, the Urshifu is going to be coming back into play as well. Uh, that Incineroar went down and I think we still haven't even seen the most likely Calyrex yet. Um, whether or not he's going to go for something here, I don't know if he used Tailwind. Do we see what the Tornadus did before? No, uh, this is Tornadus. I think this is his first real turn out okay. in the field. So we'll have to see what Tornadus does here. Yeah. I think you go for the Tailwind and you hope to get that speed set up. The I thing you have to worry about is that 
I'm pretty sure Terra Starstorm is a normal type move that won't hit Calyrex, so that's something you have to play around. I oh no, it is a stellar type move. Will it hit Calyrex? He is just going for the normal no rain bleak wind storm, so it's not guaranteed to land, but if you even hit one, you're gonna be happy. Uh, so it's a very interesting play to go for. You obviously Aqua Jet takes out Trapagos. Very well played there. A good call out. Uh, because what else could have really happened there, right? It's inevitable. Either way, they would have taken out the Shiyu or taken out the Rapagos, so it just makes us to go for it. Liquid Storm, it's gonna at least hit the Urshifu, which is gonna knock it out, thankfully. Uh, so that is gonna be one less Pokemon to worry about, forcing up the maybe Calyrex. Again, we keep saying Calyrex, because we don't know for sure, but yeah. realistically, it's most likely the Calyrex. It's, yeah, it's probably Calyrex in the back here. And there goes down Tornado. So now it's going to be a 2v1, a Chiyu versus Iron Hands and something else. And Chiyu does not stack particularly well into Iron Hands as we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And Chiyu is already really damaged. It's going to be a hard win for Chiyu but to even you... do something. You need a, a incredibly strong Heat Wave. We'll have to see. We get the reveal of the Calyrex at least though. The mystery has been unshrouded. It is a Calyrex coming out. but. With that Chiyu at about, what, like 5 HP, it's uh, looking to be the end of Battle 1, and it's going to be going first one over to Zane, which, again, I keep saying it today, but I'm not going to stop repeating myself. Very close game, uh, especially that first um, few turns where they were really just trading back and forth. These trainers are on their game right now. Yeah, Zane played incredibly well there. He made a ton of great reads and made a ton of great predictions. He used that Terra Ghost on the Urshifu mm -hmm. to block the fake out, block all that damage from turn one, able to make those switches correctly. He didn't even need Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider held in the back. Basically, yeah. I really thought Terrapagos would do a lot more with Choice Specs and that Terra Starstorm, so yeah. we'll have to see if maybe it really does need to be beside that Chiyu to get the most out of its yeah. damage. Which, which is just interesting, because again, I, I would assume, because the way it works and the way the Pokemon is, I assumed that the base power would get upped um, when it switches into its stellar form. Like, it would be the same move, but it's a different move. That's what I at least guessed. But it is just the same base power. So it actually is technically getting weaker as you go into your stellar form, which would reduce the damage that you're doing. But again, with the power that Terrapagos has, it was hitting into two relatively strong Pokemon. Um, if this was like a Calyrex or um, like a Chiyu on the other side of the field, maybe we would have seen a couple of KOs there, but with two, pr probably some of the most bulky Pokemon in this format, thinking back, it does make sense that there was no KOs there. Still, very, still very shocking. To see. Yeah, and I think the one interesting thing to note here is uh, the Terrapagos and Calyrex, even though they're both hitting with spread moves, the Calyrex is hitting with spread power damage almost double of what Chiyu, okay. I, of there what the is. Terrapagos is. So that's the question. You're trading a lot of bulk of Terrapagos is incredibly bulky and will stick around for a long time for that Shadow Rider that is incredibly fast and incredibly hard hitting, but will die to pretty much a paper cut. Basically, that's the real give and take. Do you go for light Calyrex, which is Terrapagos, or do you go for dark Calyrex, which is you know, the Shadow Rider. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of a gamble, a bit of a choice that you have to make here. But as we're getting into game two, we're going to see the Fluttermane Chiyu make the return. If we see, K I would not be surprised if we see uh, some KOs in this yeah. very first turn with the special defense reduction, plus Fluttermane just being a very strong Pokemon in and of itself. Um, we're going to see, does it have the uh, Protosynthesis with the booster energy? Yes, it has. So yeah, so this is going to be a very fast Fluttermane, which really, it's hard not to expect. Fluttermane was a dominant Pokemon for so long and has only seen a downturn of usage because another ghost type walked into the field and said, hello, I am back. Exactly. But with the Incineroar and Urshifu being on the first side of the field here, so Urshifu is not running any Protect. Incineroar, however, has the fake, or uh, the fake out. So yeah. it can get faked out, but, e okay, so it's gonna switch out the Chiyu. So no more uh, one-shot real huge threat here. Of course, one-shots are still gonna be a problem, but with the uh, Chiyu no longer a factor, it's not gonna be guaranteed. <laughs> no, and we see we see the Urshifu actually switch out for the Iron Hands. Iron Hands probably gonna be able to take a Fluttermane attack a little bit better. Going for that Moonblast, still super effective, but only really does about half. You say only. 
but <laughs> again, that is just one move coming out from one Pokemon that didn't take any damage this turn. Yeah. So Fluttermane is still at 100. It just gets free 50% off of your, you know, not exactly a wall, but as close as you're going to get to a wall in VGC without sacrificing all of your damage, right? This uh, Iron Hands, of course, still very potent of a Pokemon. It even has the Assault Vest, yeah. and it still gets taken down the half. Yeah, I mean, that Iron Hands with the Assault Vest, it's so tanky. So how do you deal with it? Chi Yu coming back in. Fluttermane probably going to look for a big Moonblast here into something. Maybe even an Ice Wind. I'm not sure. Uh, actually, no, because you want to just guarantee the KO. We're Ice seeing the Terra. Are we seeing Terra on the Iron Hands? We are. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit that Terra Water type. Iron Hand's not going to be hit by a super effective Moonblast here. We're going to take it. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Drain Punch into that Chi Yu slot. There's the Moonblast. Iron Hand nice. eats it up. Knock off into Chi Yu. So it's going to be another Chi Yu with its specs knocked off. Or heavy not. Slam. Oh, Heavy Slam again. Knocks out Fluttermane. Very scary. So that's Scarf Rather going to get knocked off of the Chi Yu. Fluttermane is out of the game. All it got was the 50% on the uh, Iron Hands and a little bit more afterwards, the Harassalization. Um, you really want to try to get more value out of your Fluttermane considering the potency that it has and how it can really just take games away completely. But unfortunately, it is going to go down here. You are going to be able to get your Traficos in, however, relatively safely. And. This is going to be the setup opportunity. You do have the Chi Yu, so you can go for the Star Storm. None of these Pokemon are faster than any of yours, so I think if you're going to go for it at any point, now would be the time. Although, you might eat a Snarl for it afterwards, which could e honestly even force a switch up, because we saw it wasn't doing a lot of damage before. It's definitely not going to do a lot of damage after eating a Snarl, which I'm pretty sure the Incineroar would survive at least one of these. And Chi Yu, it's the same typing as Incineroar, so it's probably not going to threaten to even clean up with the KO. No, I think you really got to look at making the most of Trapagos now that it's out here. It is out here to do damage, it's outside beside the partner, it wants to be beside Chiyu. So how much will it do to this Incineroar? That is the question here, we'll have to see. Iron Hands oh. going down is really big It's now Matthew single here. target damage, instead of spread. Oh, which... it lives! Oh, so It lives close. on... Maybe one or two. So it's hard to tell. But wow, I wonder if that was a roll. Oh! I didn't even realize he didn't even Terra. So I was talking no. about it doing spread, but he didn't even Terra. Which, honestly, I, I think makes sense. You do actually want to get that single target damage so you can get these uh, Pokemon down really low. It doesn't really help you to get two Pokemon down a little bit when you can get one down a lot, like that Incineroar. It's just one sneeze away from getting KO'd. Urshifu's going to be coming out, and that's going to be the Calyrex. Or no, Incineroar's just going to get sent back in, get the Intimidate off. Again, not going to matter too much against these Pokemon, but... You'll take anything you can get at this point. Urshifu is going to be the threat to beat right now for sure. Uh, but whether or not you're going to be able to do that, you're going to have to get some crafty tricks in switching into Tornadus, which yeah. I like, you know, fighting damage or fighting attacks against the flying type. is not going to be very effective, but you have to hope that's what he's thinking to go for here. In any case, both of these trainers are looking to try to make reads on their opponent. So yeah, Terrapico's returning there. I think it's interesting. I think Trapagos is in such an interesting position. Because of its ability, it will, take, it will take one hit of not super effective damage. So probably not wanting to burn, lose that ability in case something bad goes wrong. But there are the Surging Strikes. That's probably going to be it for Tornadus there. Yeah. I mean... Oh, maybe not. It maybe. might just barely live. No. No. That's it. Tornadus goes down. So you protect the... You protect the Trapagos, but you lose Tornadus in the time. And now we'll have to see what Chiyu and Tornadus can do. Again, my guess is Shadow Rider is hanging out in the back. It will now come out and out of Shadow Rider and Urshifu versus the Terrapagos and Chiyu. It's a really interesting matchup here. I'm realizing now how important the Urshifu is against the Terrapagos because the ability is just for a single hit. Yeah. You know, Surging Strikes, of course, being multi-hitting, so you would get full damage at least on two of those strikes. Now we have the Terror of Gen There's eight. Shadow Rider. <laughs> you got so, Urshifu and Shadow Rider coming out. Will we see the Terra Stellar hit? I wouldn't. I would be shocked if we didn't hear the, see the Terra Stellar Star Storm. You haven't burned the Terra yet. If you're not going to burn it, now is the time to burn it. I mean, you might not even get the chance to. I mean, actually, because Calyrex would go first with the speed, so you would absorb at least one of those attacks with the shell, so you actually could. 
That makes sense. Yeah. And, yeah, and he, of course he is going to go for the Stellar and then try to go for the Star Storm. So yeah, good smart choice on that end. And hopefully here we're going to see some slightly more damage and actually see if our kind of thoughts were right. If it oh, so, actually he's going to oh, Chi just Yu. one shots Chi Yu. That makes a lot of sense. We're not going to have the Beads of Ruin in play anymore, so we're going to have a little bit um, more tankiness afforded to both of these Pokemon here. And he's banking on the fact that this Calyrex will not go down. Even if it did, you got the uh, Focus Sash as yeah. well to worry about. So this is going to see. Let's what, see how much damage it's going to do here. Just a not, little over half to both. I think, I think if if the fish, if Chi is still alive, oh, that might be enough to knock out. With both Pokemon still alive. There's the surging strikes. Oh, that means the Calyrex. Or what's the speed? Or does it have Scarf? Oh, it does have Scarf. That makes sense. Yeah, Calyrex okay. did have Focus Sash, so now that's broken. But let's see what it can hit back with. There's the Psy Shock. There's the reason to use it. Psy Shock gets a knockout, and your winner of round three is Zane. Zane taking a 2-0 over Matthew. That game coming down to the Chi Yu, basically. Maybe, actually, well, it's Surgeon Strike, so it did die in one hit. <laughs> so even if it had a little bit more HP, the second one would have knocked it out. So Chi Yu just being so fragile, plus the typing, not really helping it out, giving it any favors against those Surgeon Strikes. But I'm very confident that if it was able to withstand that damage, we might have still been seeing some gameplay going on. Yeah, I think Zane there played an incredible game and just absolutely read Matthew to mm -hmm. bits. He made some great switches. And it's the reason why Calyrex is such a strong Pokemon that people are bringing it to so many tournaments. Exactly. As much as it's not finding that top success in the in these like events, you still can't like be not be prepared for it. You have to be prepared to face it and you have to be prepared for it to sweep through your team. Zane did a great position of he didn't bring out Calyrex early because he didn't need it. He exactly. left it in the back, and that once everything else was weak, Calyrex can come out, Astro Barrage, pick up the final few kills. I think Terrapagos is a great Pokemon, but we are starting to see some of its downsides. Is it mm -hmm. can't get those one knockout kills like probably the other two Calyrexes can get. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen Ice Rider yet today, so I'm excited That's to see true. how Ice yeah. Rider will do here if it's being played today. And it's interesting to see. Didn't see Amoongus that game. I think we didn't see Zane bring <laughs> out Amoongus as he just didn't need it. His offensive power with the other three mons was just so powerful. Yeah, I really feel like the Amoongus actually would have slowed him down quite a bit. Um, I feel like every single Pokemon that he did end up bringing represented a threat that had to be addressed immediately, which is more important in a format like this than mitigating threats from your opponent. It's just having threats more significant than their own that they have to worry about mitigating yours. Um, and that's kind of the gamble you're making with Amoongus. It's do they have a solution to my problem or vice versa? Yeah. And you're forcing that issue for them, not giving them any real time to think about it. But I do know Oh, there's at least one uh, Ice Rider out there. I think we're going to see them in the top four cut, which we're going to be seeing after the conclusion of Swiss Rounds 4, which will be our next and final game for, um, of course, the Swiss Pools before we head into that top four cut. But before we head over into that, any last words wrapping up? Any thoughts lingering in your head about that last, honestly, really impressive game? Yeah, I, I really think Shadow Rider might be on our winning team for today. Everyone who's played Shadow Rider has been so impactful, so we'll see mm -hmm. what Shadow Rider can do in the rest of the tournament today. Yeah, I honestly would be hard. It would be hard to disagree with that sentiment. Shadow Rider showing a very strong opposing threat for everybody here today. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to throw it over to a quick break, and we'll see you guys for round four.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have some more Pokemon action for you, ready to go. This is going to be the last round of Swiss before we head into that ever-coveted top four cut action where their points are on the line. But today and right now, we have the next matchup lined up for you. We have Steven Stark going up against James I can't read that last name, unfortunately. <laughs> it's okay, because we got some really interesting teams here. Let's start off with Steven's team here. We are finally seeing Calyrex Ice Rider hit the floor. Calyrex Ice Rider, a really defensive Pokemon that's slow, but hits really hard with that Glacial Lance as that spread move. We also see Incineroar come back. This is our first time seeing Pelipper on the field. Ooh. Pelipper with that Focus Sash. It's got the Wide Guard. It's got Protect. It's really there to just stall out with the Drizzle. I mean, he's going to be hitting with some really powerful weather balls and some really powerful hurricanes. Don't really see much uh, capitalization on the rain. Usually you see at least one Pokemon running Thunder or um, you have the uh, Duraludon evolution uh, yeah. usually running the, uh, like the, what's that move called? The one that's the huge, insane electric cannon that buffs itself, basically. You usually see something like that coming into play. But right now, it's basically just Pelipper. <laughs> Even the uh, Raging Bolt not running Thunder. No, but it's still really strong. Exactly. And I think it's still something to be scared of. Hurricane. We also have a yep. Moongus on the field, as always. And we have the Raging Bull coming back with that, that Assault Vest set. Yes, Let's normal. look over at Maridon coming back to the field, looking to re-solidify <laughs> itself as a top competitor. Running that Choice Spec set, pretty common we've seen with all the Maridons today. We're looking for Frig that Frigoraph Blood Moon set, running pretty common. We're seeing Ogre Pond return to the fir for the first time oh. today. In a form we don't normally see, that Quarter Storm form. We're seeing that Rock Ogre po Ogre <laughs> Ogre Pond. <laughs> yeah. It's got that cor Corner Mask, so it's running Ivy Cudgel for that Rock-type attack. Mm -hmm. It's got the Follow Me, the Power Weapon, the Spiky Shield. Pretty common, but again, a really defensive mod. And with that Sturdy, it means it won't go down in one shot. So it's going to stick around, it's going to do a lot of damage. I really, it's it's so tragic, the plight of the rock typing, like, you'd assume that they're usually really strong, and pun intended, sturdy, but they need often, they often need abilities like sturdy so they don't go down in one hit, because the typings that are so strong offensively are also so strong against rock, so it's like a weird, uh, you'd expect it to be strong in one respect, but it's actually very defensively weak, um, to the point that you can't really make the plays that you'd want to, in any case, that's the typing that we're going to be going for here and we're starting off strong with very powerful leads coming up for both teams we're going to have the uh, Ice Rider and Incineroar leading for Steven whereas we're going to see Maridon and Farigaraf coming out for James and uh, seems that we're definitely going to see some people coming out swinging in this first turn for both teams yeah I think Trick Room trying to play Trick Room into Ice Rider is very difficult Ice Rider wants Trick Room for itself so you have to hope that you are Blood Moon Ursaluna is actually slower than it. If it's not slower, you're going to be taking those really strong Glacial Lance attacks for super effective damage. Ogre Pond is actually really good here because of that Rock Typing. It is a great counter into Calyrex. If it can Terra and get into that Rock Type, it won't, it won't take super effective damage from that Glacial Lance. So I wouldn't be shocked if that's why you see Ogre Pond Rock more now. Yeah, we'll that... see what gets played here. Maridon in an interesting position. It wants to get off that damage fast. But it also doesn't want to be stuck in Trick Room. We're going to see Calyrex the Protect. The Protect yeah. going to eat some damage this turn. It's going to make sure it's just going to keep itself nice and cozy. Volt Switch is going to be the first play. And that's oh. going to be a significant amount of damage onto the Incineroar. It's basically out of the game at this point with all the uh, spread and just chip damage that can be done here. We're going to see the Ursaluna switch back in. This Ursaluna is going to really have one real play to make. It's probably going to be the parting shot into uh, switch out. Yep, onto the Ursaluna, which should have been a Maridon. Unfortunately, it's going to be an Ursaluna now. But Ursaluna, even while debuff, is still a very potent hitter with that Ferrograph, especially next to him. I like this setup, actually. It's a very simple lead. Lead with one of your strongest Pokemon, but it's also one of your fastest. So unless you're getting faked out, you can get a Volt Switch and then switch into your real switch. It, like, uh, you're switching to your real lead, which is Ursaluna Ferrograph. Yeah. And it's done pretty safely, too, while doing a significant amount of damage and forcing your opponent probably to make some switches in the meantime. A really smart play coming out from James. As we see that rain go up, there's the foul play into the protect. So no trick room going up, which is honestly probably better for that Blood Moon or Saluna, as I think Blood Moon is actually just a bit faster than Calyrex. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that foul play go up, really trying to knock out that Calyrex. That Calyrex is the biggest threat on the field right now. I wouldn't be shocked if we see it switch out, 
Really, that Pelipper can't wide guard, so it'll probably hit for a really powerful Hurricane or a Weather Ball into something here, and probably into that Earth Luna, and try and really damage that Earth Luna, knock it down, and try and just remove it as an option. We see the Terra Normal here coming out on Ursa Luna. Yeah, you're definitely right on that. It's going to be even more of a potent hitter. Again, it has been affected by Parting Shot, but once again, this Pokemon is so very potent with its strikes. Weather Ball is going to come out, so it's not going to be super effective thanks to that Terrastalization, but oh. it's still going to be huge. You don't want to underestimate the damage that Pelipper can do, but the Blood Moon in Retaliation, likewise, you can't make the same underestimation. Of course, not going to do as much damage, and of course, it's not going to get the KO, but it knocks itself out. It knocks itself I out. I'm sorry, process. Pelipper, I doubted your power. <laughs> wow! That is a... I'm shocked that Weather Ball did that much damage. But wow, I really underestimated the true power of Pelipper. I am looking, it's got a special, it's got a crazy high special attack stat. The most important part of that play, however, is the fact that he's able to get the Calyrex off of it. Of course, you lost your blood, your, your Ursula in the Blood Moon, but you're fine with that because you got him a Rhydon sitting in the back, which is now sitting in the front seat. Yeah. It's, it is Friday, but it knows exactly where, what seat it wants to take. And uh, it's going to be coming out now and just get ready for the action. It's going to be facing down a Raging Bolt and while, uh, you know, the dragon matchup is scary for both dragons involved, it's going to be significantly faster. It's going to be able to get the Draco Meteor off before and Tell me, Eric, is it running Protect? No, it is not, is Raging it? Bolt is not running Protect, and it is, it is not a Terra Fair Raging Bolt. So it will take this Draco Meteor to the face, either as super effective damage or just neutral damage, which still, even a neutral damage hit from a, from a Maridon, it's going to be a lot of damage. Plus, you still have you still have the Phorygraph up there, which is not a Pokemon you should underestimate. It will still hit it, pretty hard. It was able to take out the Calyrex with just Foul Play. Yeah. One thing that's important to note, though, is this Raging Bolt is running the Assault Fest. So while it's still going to be doing a lot of damage, it actually might be able to withstand whatever's going to come out. It is still going to Terrastalize into the Electric Typing, just to make sure that whatever it is going to swing back with. Because again, I would be surprised if Maridon takes it out, but the speed on Phorygraph is also notoriously low, so it's probably going to act. Oh, the helping hand! Oh, the helping hand Draco Meteor does this that enough. Do it's something. not super. It is just neutral damage. It is enough, folks. You cannot underestimate the power of Maridon here, as Maridon is a Pokemon that was underlooked by so many of the pro players going into regionals uh, in Indiana regionals. People underlooked Maridon, and Maridon went on and won. So Rana is not a Pokemon to underlook for Regraph. It took that Weather Ball better than the uh, Ursaluda did. Yeah, I mean, Regraph is a tankier Pokemon than Ursaluda, but still, that Weather Ball does so much damage. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised here if we just see the Maridon, maybe just do an Electric type, or actually, no, it's running Specs, so just Draco Meteor once again into the uh, Pelipper. Furagath cleans up the Incineroar. It does have Fake Out, however, so you could see some play, but do you really want to... Actually, I think you do want to switch out your Maridon, maybe. Yeah, just to I think get the, being uh, locked into two... Of, you're minus two for Draco Meteor now. You can probably switch out and save it for the end game and probably be in a great position. Yeah. You don't... You know that Pel Pelipper is the only Pokemon left, you could just get some chip damage off with your Incineroar before you take your Maridon back in. It's the fastest Pokemon, hands down. It's super effective into the only real remaining threat. Incineroar has no HP to work with, but he's going to switch out his Furgarath instead and leave the Maridon in. Interesting play. Uh, I think he's just going to try to get the Intimidation. Um, so whatever Incineroar wants to do, it's probably going to be less effective. He's not going to be able to use... Oh, in fact, just Draco Meteor to get him right out of the game. Um, so he's going to be taking significant damage from yeah. uh, Weather Ball, which I'm assuming is going to come out. But, oh, actually it's going to be the hurricane, hurricane into the Incineroar. Not That's enough. Not gets the confusion, though. Mm. That's not great. That confusion can be dangerous. Now now you switch out. Switch out the Maridon. Try and get the fake out. Hopefully don't hit yourself <laughs> with confusion. That would be not great. I, well, this is ultimately the play he ended up wanting to make. He just wanted to get the Incineroar in while allowing his Maridon to get the KO, switch it out so it gets its special attack back, force Pelipper to deal with two Pokemon in a 2v1 situation for maybe one to two turns before you still, even if you lose uh, one of those Pokemon, you just have a Maridon coming back in to so just knock it yeah. out instantly, right? So it's a choice specs Maridon hitting on a water flying type with an electric move. Incineroar so. actually does hurt itself in confusion. Pelipper's gonna weather ball. Take it out for sure. Gonna say goodbye to Incineroar. Yeah.
that's going to be a knockout. But now Bridal comes back in for free. It will still have Electric Train up. The rain's gone away, so there goes that Weather Ball. Electric Train goes away, but Rhydon's going to come back out and just set it back up again. I think this might be it. Very our first match is going to go to James here. Yeah, very much seeming to be the case, especially with that Electric Train. This is, this is kind of overkill. We're going to see that HP bar move very quickly in yeah. the opposite direction. And, and there's the Electric Drift. So it will do double the amount of damage because it's a super effective move. I mean, this Pelipper does have Choice Scarf, but that's going to drop to zero real quick. Oh yeah, focus, focus Sash is going to keep it up. <laughs> Impressive that that little band was able to withstand so much damage, but of course, for Rig Raff. Uh, There's the Hurricane. Oh, it's going to get KO. Takes out Rig Raff. Unless a, a miracle really occurs here, it's still going to be the game in favor of James, but really just playing it super safe to the point where he wanted to just guarantee the victory. And yeah. that's where we're going to see it come out now with that last move, Electro Drift, taking out the Pelipper, sticking it out to the end. And that's going to be James taking out game one. I guess the only way that could have won would be if that Electro Drift missed, which I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's 100% accuracy. Um, and then Hurricane confusing, and then it confuses itself. It hits itself repeatedly until it... Yeah, it was going to be a hard road back there for Steven, but I think he has a lot of things he can do to swing this game back into his favor. It is far from over in this, oh, for in sure. this game. Yeah, and that, that was it just because of that game itself, right? The momentum shift into the Maridon, getting the Ursaluna to be able to take down the Calyrex with the um, Fergarath play. That alone, I think, kind of set the game into James's favor there. But if history doesn't repeat itself, this one is still definitely anybody's game. Um, Steven could even just change his lead a little bit and put himself at a much better advantage or even just keep it exactly the same and just play with that in mind. The plays that he was going to try to go for um, with that Volt Switch into the uh, foul play, just protect, right? There's a lot of things you can do differently going into your next game. Whether or not we're going to see those plays coming out We'll have to wait and see. Other Pokemon he could consider bringing out that might work a little bit better in this matchup. Um, I mean, Incineroar, I really don't know if it's actually bringing that much value as a con as a as a controversial as that might be to say yeah. because. Part of, like you're playing into a uh, Maridon, it has Volt Switch. Mm -hmm. um, Ursaluna, it's going to be doing stuff for like one turn, anyways. It yeah. parting shot it, and it still didn't really matter because it's just such a powerful Pokemon with the Terrasalization, with the Blood Moon, with Frigorath helping hand, and all those things you got to worry about. So you're not getting much value out of uh, Intimidate, you're not getting much value out of uh, Fake Out, you're not even getting, I don't think we even saw Fake Out, you're not getting much value out of Parting Shot. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see the uh, Incineroar getting switched out here. I could be wrong though. Yeah, and I doubt we see Amoongus. Amoongus, like mm -hmm. that electric terrain just blocks sleep, so Amoongus really just isn't useful here. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see Urshifu Rapid Strike come back instead of Incineroar, because as much as Incineroar is great, you need some, and you need something to deal with Ursaluna, you need something to deal with Fergaraf here, mm -hmm. and as much as I doubted Pelipper's pal power, Pelipper is doing an incredible job here. Yeah, one shotting sure. that Urs that Blood Moon Ursaluna, I did not think was possible, but it did <laughs> it, and I think Pelipper will come back. As much as it does, it's got Wide Guard. There's not much it can Wide Guard against. Yeah, it's just one less move, unfortunately. If you knew the matchup beforehand, you could have switched it to be something else, but you'd rather have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. But we're going to start things We out. are seeing Amoongus. I am shocked that Amoongus is coming out Very here as Electric Terrain blocks sleep. But maybe there's a good chance that Steven's seeing something that I don't. That is a very Let's good see thing. See what happens. The Rocky Helmet even not gonna have much value. Like there is has there been any contact at all? I don't think so. So no. James is running a very special attack heavy team. Exactly. I mean, he's really only his physical attacker is Ogre Pond, and we don't know if he's got Ogre Pond with him. Oh, that is. I didn't even think about the Ogre Pond. But I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he won the last game, right? He's just sticking through with his current strategy, making it work. We're most likely going to see that Volt Switch come out once again. It's faster than both Pokemon. So even if you get slept, what item is that Ursuline holding? It's Life Orb. You do have, okay, nobody's holding onto the safety goggles. So you can't really make a hard call out there. But There's the Rage Powder. Yeah, that is at least going to afford Calyrex a turn to actually get to play the game, yeah. which it didn't have last time. Um, so even if you get that uh, takedown coming out from the uh, 
the Ferrigarath and you're able to take down the uh, Amoongus, at least your Calyrex gets one solid turn of gameplay <laughs> before it gets yeah, completely Yeah, we see wiped. Ursuluna in the back here, we see Incineroar in the back here, Incineroar is going to come out. I think this is a great option. Mm. Ice Rider Calyrex does have that uh, clear amulet on it, so it won't be affected by Intimidate. And it's Incineroar not run, it might run, it actually doesn't have Parting Shot either. This is a very interesting Incineroar set. There's the high, high horsepower, Incineroar eats it up. Hmm, fake out. Oh, I mean, U-turn I think just might be a more, s mm, this is just so many hard decisions to make. Yeah, it's a really hard choice here. Uh, I mean, yeah, either way, this, I'm pretty confident this Amoongus is gonna go down before it gets to do too much. You actually could see the switch. It does have Regenerator, so you benefit off of those switches. None of these Pokemon really threaten a single hit KO. So you could switch into something a little bit, uh, then what do you switch into? I guess Raging Bolt, but do you really want to take that much? Yeah, sure. we don't know what's on the other side of the field here, which so it's hard to say what the switch is. You gotta make a choice with Incineroar here. Going to go for that, I think, Flare Blitz into Ice Rider, which honestly, oh, no, into the Amoongus, get rid of the Amoongus. Honestly, I don't disagree with that option. Taking it out. I mean, realistically, there isn't much of an option other than the Raging Bolt for Steven to have taken into this game, so I'm not going to be surprised if that is going to And the foul play see. does almost have to Calyrex. Calyrex gets at the Trick Room. He's so it is now the fastest thing on the field. That is something to be scared of. It's got that Glacial Lance. Mm -hmm. What other slow Pokemon could he have brought out here today? Uh, I mean, Amoongus, really, the only other slow Pokemon here. Uh, everything else is relatively fast, so... Yeah, I think Calyrex is the slowest thing available right now, so we'll see what can happen. Again, both these players are fighting for a spot in top cut. They're both 2-1 and one right now. So we are looking at a 3-1 top cut. There will be a chance to bubble in, but you don't want to leave your fate to how other people are doing. So these players need to win this match, guarantee them a spot Electric, in top four. Electric Terrain is still up, so this Raging Bolt is actually going to be slightly more potent than it otherwise might have been. I don't know how big of a fact this is going to be, since Cinderwar living on a thread, as well as the fact that uh, Ferrigarath is still pretty tanky, I think. What we could see coming out, Incineroar is actually slower, which means it's faster than the Raging Bolt. It could get a parting shot off into... Uh, what else is he running here? Did he take uh, Ursaluna, or did he take something else this time around? I wouldn't be surprised if we, we see a parting shot I'm pretty sure Ursaluna is in the back here, yeah. so we'll see that switch to Ursaluna. I would like to see something like that. A parting shot into Ursaluna onto the Calyrex, potentially. Or maybe, I think it actually does make more sense to put that onto the Raging Bolt. Um, Calyrex is a little bit less threatening right now, but... Seeing a Terra Grass Calyrex, I don't disagree with this. Okay. You uh, yeah. probably they probably weren't expecting a Flare Blitz into the Calyrex, and now you've also blocked down Maridon for dealing a ton of damage in the future. We are going to see the double Terra here, actually. This is quite interesting. Don't Terra on Ferrigarath? Yeah. Terra on the Ferrigarath. We are going to Terra... Terra Ground Ferrigarath. Okay, so that means it's it does oh, have it's terror, got terror blast, blast. As well. so it could just be a huge threat to the uh, raging bolt. The one there's glacial lance. Yeah, and Cinderor is gone now, but Ferrograph still holding on, much slower than the raging bolt, so it's gonna act first. It might even be able to knock it out. I wouldn't actually know. That's a little that's a little too much. I don't think it's gonna knock it out. Um, just based off of the oh, the raging bolt is actually slower and gets oh. rid of the Ferrograph. 195. That terror was an interesting move there. This is a 97. Is it holding a... I'm not sure how it's... Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, that's why. But in any case, we're going to see that Fergraph go down. Ursaluna coming out next. And like you said, you're playing for a lot of points now. If you can make it to the top cut, you don't want to have to do it on a hope and a chance that the um, opponents are playing any worse, right? Yeah. So you want to... Oh, that's a surrender? Coming out for James, I believe. Uh, but still, a very hard-fought game from both competitors. And, yeah, I uh, think I think the plus, plus one Glacial Lance would just knock out both Pokemon. Yeah, So probably. I don't agree with the Surrender here. Get your mind back into the game and move forward into a Game 3 scenario here.
Yeah, I mean, it, the the Calyrex actually getting that Trick Room off really kind of set... It was like playing Parish Song, you know? It, yeah. it really just set in motion the <laughs> beginning of the end. Getting that Chilling Nay as well makes Glacial Lance so much more of a threatening move. You really don't want to have to worry about taking that. Your Maridon, definitely not much of a physical or um, any kind of tank at all. So no. it wouldn't really have had much of a chance to withstand all of those moves coming out. Yeah, and I'm looking at our pairings here, and we have four people that are two and one, and we have one p and two people that are two or three and zero. Oh. So that means that to get into top four, you have to win this game. So this is a lot on the line. Mm -hmm. To make that top four cut, one of these p players are gonna have to win, it, and they will move on to our top four. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's been a close game. It was a great comeback by Steven there. As much as maybe Amugas didn't do anything, it slowed things down. It wasted a lot of turns by just existing and forcing. James to go and attack it instead of worrying about the other threats on the field and let those other threats do stuff and get ready. So we'll have to see if James adapts now. Now, how does he come back? And knowing that, okay, well, I didn't think about Amoongus, but Amoongus was there and I had mm -hmm. to focus on it and then everything else got set up around it. Maybe the Ogre Pond, the, actually the rock typing might be pretty viable as an offensive type, there's not. A, we mentioned that the defensive typing for a rock is pretty weak. Like it takes a lot of threats from a lot of the offensive typings popular in the format. But in this game, the only real one you got to worry about is the developer with yeah. that, uh, you know, weather ball. Uh, that's like a water type move you got to worry about. Everything else, I think, is more or less neutral. Um, so you could actually get away with some pretty threatening attacks coming out from the Ogre Pond. That's if he decided to go for it, but the same lead as before. Maridon, Ferragaraf, he's confident he's going to be able to play this one to the best of its abilities. You're not going to have to worry about any kind of fake outs, anything like that to start things off. Wide Guard, not going to play any factor here. It's just straight up mind games, no real gimmicks that you have to worry about in this first turn. Just a hard read on your opponent. What do you think they're going to go for? Yeah, what I, I honestly, as weird as it is, discharge isn't a horrible option. But I think James is. It looks like James is predicting a switch out on the Earth so he's going to go for that Drake or Meteor. Hopefully, switching into the Raging Bolt. If he makes this read correctly, that would be a huge read and a huge momentum switch. On the other side of things, though, if it's not. That is the Scarfed Urshifu is with the Surging Strikes could take out the Moranum, but it's actually going to go for the Ferrigraph. A follow-up is most likely coming out from the um, Pelipper to take out the Ferrigraph. So, sure, you get your Draco Meteor off onto the Urshifu, but now you're forced to switch it out, basically, if you want to yeah. have any impact with it. But, okay, you know, I kind of forgot that Draco Meteor is kind of a strong move, oh, yeah, so it is going to knock it out. <laughs> I, I am shocked that Steven didn't make one switch. He really read and went, I don't think you're going to click Discharge and made that read correctly mm. because if you see discharge and you've got two electric type pokemon or two water type pokemon in front of you you would probably make a switch but he didn't make the switch and now he knocks out you you trade ursaluna or you trade urshifu for freegraph and freegraph was a big opponent in james winning that game so now what does he do how does he come back here I feel like you can't go wrong taking out the Incineroar. You're gonna be sending it right into the face of a Calyrex, which is exactly where it wants to be, actually, threatening those fire moves. Um, of course, there isn't gonna be any redirection shenanigans. This nope. one is running Protect, however, so you gotta be careful with what you're gonna be going for in your next turn. You could try to be cute here and try to go for something a little bit uh, more interesting. I am surprised to see that. I figured if he was going to switch, he'd do it off of a Volt switch. But, but he's, he's choice back. He's cho he's oh, locked right, into Drake already. Meteor. The uh, other annoying thing about Pelipper being out here, that Flare Blitz is going to do a lot less damage. Exactly, because of that rain, that, that Flare Blitz is going to be reduced in power, so huge. it probably doesn't even come close to knocking out Glass Share. Ursaluna is going to come out. My guess is we probably say goodbye to Ursaluna here. It's mm. going to take a very powerful attack. There's the Terra. Onto the Incineroar. Terra Incineroar, sure. so we are getting into a ghost or grass type Incineroar. Mm. If, if, if Glacial Lance. Ice Rider, yeah, if Ice Rider hits it's both Glacial them. Lance, that's probably it for both of these two Pokemon. So you sure you tank the Weather Ball a little bit more, but now. You just better really hope you don't see that Glacial Lance coming out. U-Turn is going to bring back out the Maridon. You want that back out as fast as possible to have any chance of causing any issues for this Calyrex. But still got one turn to work with here. I actually wouldn't be surprised if we see the Trick Room just to really cement the uh, the advantage he has. And There's there the it room. is. 
This is looking brutal right now. It could be difficult, but it's not impossible. Maridon, a very powerful Pokemon, but with no... Well, I mean, you still could switch in the Incineroar, I guess, if you want to make sure your Maridon survives here, but then you're kind of just burning out the turns. You don't really have any damage on this Calyrex yet. You want to at least get something here, but you wouldn't even have a chance to hit anything before your Maridon goes down, so I don't really see the sense of doing anything other than trying to get the switch and hope for something here, but then again, that's exactly what your opponent's predicting you do. Maybe yeah. you can get away with something, right? You gotta start finding a way to burn turns here. You actually wanna get rid of rain, you wanna get rid of Trick Room. How do you burn moves? You're gonna hit that Blood Moon into the Calyrex and switch back in Incineroar, try and get that Maridon out of danger so it can maybe come back in later if it's still alive. Incineroar oh. comes back out here. Incineroar with the fake out pressure. One thing. Stall another set of turns. Oh. Okay, I was gonna say, I forgot Glacial Lance is physical, but it has a clear amulet, so it's not gonna be affected by Intimidate, and it's going to be Blood Moon lives. massive. Blood Moon is still in this, however, but Chilling Nay basically promises that Maridon's going down if he takes one of those glacial. Yeah. But we'll have to see. Maybe there's some chance. Here's the Blood Moon. Blood Moon has to get the knockout. But it's going it to knock itself not. out with the Life Orb. Yeah, and it knocks itself out due to Life Orb. Oof. That is brutal. Maybe there's this. something, but I think that might be it, folks. Yeah, I mean, maybe a huge discharge, but again, it's just... You'd have to survive the Glacial Lance, which yeah. I don't think you can, especially now that it's single target damage instead of spread. It's... Might as well run it, might as well see. Yeah. Run the calculations. Run the calculations. Okay. No. No, <laughs> no well, calculations. Folks, moving on into your top four cut, I believe is Steven. Taking that two to one after losing the first thing, comes back and makes some incredible plays and wins that set there. An incredible battle, honestly. Um, this is one of the this is one of the more VGC battles we've seen today for sure. So fast, no room for error, and it came down to a couple of critical turns where your previous one set you up for it, and whether or not that was a good thing for you, you just gotta make the most of the situation that you're in every turn that you're in. Um, ultimately, of course, Steven Stark just really lining up those dominoes to always fall in his favor, and it really paid off there i wasn't very i didn't have a lot of confidence in those uh in that trick room play the first time but once i saw the fact that it basically means maridon is no longer a threat at all because it's so fast yeah it now and it's so weak that it now does nothing it basically trick room basically ko's uh, i mean this maridon is why calyrex is so strong in both forms, this Ice Rider form that's slower but is bulkier and can hit a lot harder is incredible. And we'll have to see if Steven can make that top two and make it to finals to win our first day one. Mm -hmm. but so I believe our finals would be R10, Zen will be, or Zayn will be there, who we saw last round. We do know that Steven is in our top four, and we were looking for a top four between Rowan and Eric. Between Rowan and someone else be interesting to see what happens here oh rowan is all oh this gets really interesting i miss rowan at two and one yeah rowan at two and one nick is at two and one there are a lot of people that could take this top spot and i'm excited really? to see what happens yeah there's a lot of battling that's gonna have to go outside of these uh the stream right now they're gonna have to really put their blood sweat and tears into making sure they can make it into that top cut but like we've just been kind of discussing this whole time is brutal it's brutal out there and yeah. it comes down to just a couple of choices in a single turn that could completely turn things around for you whether or not you get to make it into the top cut or not but shortly enough ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have your top cut ready for you as we get things going into the finals for today top four is going to be coming up after we come back from a very quick break don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen a lot more action getting ready for you see you soon
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in our top cut. We have our finalists here for today, and we are going to get right into the next battle. We don't want to dilly-dally at all, do we? No, let's talk about the semifinal matchup. Steven made his way into the semifinal, so he will be going up against Artan, who we have not seen. So let's go over Artan's before this match starts. Z I see chat. Zane has actually already advanced to our finals, so Zane will be in our finals for today. Mm -hmm. Zane won first place. Our fourth place finisher had to step out, so Zane is already in the finals, so that will be exciting to see. Let's go over our tense team. This is a very interesting team, and I'm excited to see how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. I was actually talking to you about this team a little bit earlier. I was mentioning that someone brought a little bit more of an interesting team. He calls this his fun team, and <laughs> uh, I think you can tell why. Why don't you uh, let us know what he's running? Yeah, we are seeing the Calyrex Ice Rider matchup here. So we're seeing Cali Rider Ice Ice Rider. We're seeing the Urshifu Single Strike. We're seeing Blood Moon Ursa Luna is here. Farigraph is here. And then the two interesting mons. We are seeing Smeargle, Own Tempo, Focus Sash, Fake Out, Spore, Follow Me, Decorate. That is just such a wild <laughs> moveset. And then we're seeing Annihilate with the Choice Scarf, with the Final Gambit, Coaching, Taunt, and Shadow Claw. Coaching, Final Gambit, some really interesting support moves here. I think that final gamut will take out almost anything on the field, and if not, get them really low. So that's a really interesting tech move. We haven't seen Annihilate be super impactful since the start of the Sword and Shield era, mm -hmm. so it's interesting to see Annihilate come back here. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very interesting lineup, for sure. A lot of interesting choices. Even the fact that it's a single strike Ur Urshifu versus the um, Surging Strikes. Usually, Surging Strikes is probably the more popular one. The water typing goes a long way to make sure it can withstand a lot of things that otherwise wouldn't. Um, as well as the stab is just very um, potent against a lot of the standard threats. Water type is just very strong against a lot of the common threats, like, you know... Uh, Incineroar for sure and one of the other very interesting things about this team he mentioned that probably the biggest weakness it has is to Maridon and thankfully for him he's not gonna have to worry about Maridon against his opponent Steven Stark with his restricted being Calyrex Ice Rider so like you said a little bit before it is a battle of the Ice Riders and we're getting right into it with the Smeargle leading. You also mentioned that the Smeargle being a little bit of a scary Pokemon, he doesn't want to lose because it does so much for his team. So interesting to already see it leading out. Yeah, Smeargle is such a crazy wild tech Pokemon. We're seeing the fake out into the trick room. This will be an interesting matchup here. We'll see what happens. Again, these players fighting to get into that top spot. Loser comes in third. The winner goes off to fight Zane in that final spot. And we will have an Ice Rider into the finals. Who will it be? Who will take? Who will ride this frozen horse to victory? At, at the very least, we'll be, we will be seeing one Ice Rider going to the finals. But it might not be ice for very long. Actually, the, the uh, Terrasolidation coming onto the Smeargle going to make it a grass type. Uh, what's he looking to resist with that? Is that going to be... I mean, you're looking to resist a lot of these strong water type moves. You're looking to resist... Yeah, okay. I forgot that it was two water types on the yeah. field right away. Two water types on the other side of the field looking to block those. Smeargle into the fake out into the Pelipper, so the Pelipper blocks that damage. Got we'll the, see what this... The Urshifu going for that Surging Strikes. Looks like that Smeargle might just barely hang on. Not with a lot. Oh, oh maybe not. I think that down. Rain Boost is too much. Yeah. Smeargle much. goes down without being able to do much and burning that Terra up. You hate to see that. Might be one of those calculations that you make ahead of time. You know that it can withstand a Surging Strikes, but... Can it withstand a surging strikes in the rain? Something you might not prepare for. No. But the trick room does go up, so now Calyrex is in position to start dealing damage and start causing chaos. Blood Moon Ursuna gonna come in to take advantage of the trick room. We also saw that Urshifu is in the back. So no we we are seeing Oh yeah, no, he doesn't have No Ferigraphs here. No Ferigraphs yet. You could what you really could look at it as is that was just a very convoluted rage powder. Yes. Uh, on that uh, <laughs> on that Smeargle. Just buying one turn for this Calyrex, and it might even just be what he needs. Because assuming um, this single strike Urshifu is running, actually, no choice ban, not the scarf. Wide Guard's going to come out to protect against that Glacial Lance. This is the first time we're seeing that uh, Wide Guard being considered in this um, tournament today. But. Coming out against Pelipper, close combat is going to be the choice instead of the Glacial Lance. Blood Moon is going to be a follow-up as well onto the Urshifu, and it's going to be enough to knock it out. Only one bear can stand yeah. tall here, and that's going to be Ursaluna. Yeah, Taking losing that Urshifu is really impactful. Urshifu is a great counter into Calyrex, and now that Urshifu is gone, we'll have to see who else is in the back who can deal with Calyrex. 
Calyrex himself. Calyrex himself. We see Calyrex into Calyrex. Now it's the question is, who is Calyrex is slower? I think these are both min speed Calyrexes. I'm looking at our data here. Uh, let's see, 94 into 95. Ooh, I think Artans is just a tiny bit slower, but we will see how this plays out. We will see what they do. 94 into 95. That's Very close. Incredible. Uh, close combat. Wow, all right, so we're gonna have to see who's gonna be coming out first here. Either way, you might not be able to get the Glacial Lance. I don't think you even want to. It's gonna be resisted by the Calyrex and it's gonna be neutral to the Pelipper. So you might honestly try to go for something else here. In any case though, Calyrex on the side of uh, Artan, if it gets hit by anything, it's gone because it used that close combat. Yeah. It's already gonna be very exposed to the threats that both these Pokemon have. Widegar's gonna be committed on the side of uh, Pelipper on Steven Stark. Thankfully for uh, Calyrex, it doesn't really use much setup, so his Calyrex is just going to protect himself this turn. But Ursaluna going to take huge damage. Still Ursaluna gonna survive, lives, though. So That's really important, that hyper voice. voice. Ursaluna will take itself Wide out, guard, but I though. think it's going to take down that Pelipper with it. No, Wide Guard is. So oh, Wide Guard! Uh, does it, it's even going to hit itself with the Life Orb. I'm not no, sure. No, Wide Guard no. will block that damage. So Wide Guard actually protecting Pelipper and protecting Calyrex. And protecting Ursaluna from knocking, from from the knocking itself out. But really, Ursula needs to sur won't be able to survive going for the Glacial Lance. Thinking about it. Right now, it's just both players are trying to figure out what's going to be the optimal play here. It's going to set them out, set them up for the most success possible. Looking at the moveset of this Ursaluna, it is just running, uh, yeah, just standard stuff. It's not going to have any real tricks up its sleeve, so it's going to switch out, and we're going to see the Urshifu come back in. Single strike on this one. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be able to withstand any of the major threats that you usually see come out. Glacial Land. I think, I think we're really, what we're seeing here is the true power of Wide Guard. We've had a lot of matchups where Wide Guard hasn't been important. This is the matchup where you needed Wide Guard, and Wide Guard is, is saving the team here. There's that Glacial Lance. It's going to do a ton of damage. Urshifu goes down to half. Trick Room's still up. Urshifu might not get a chance to go. It's got Sucker Punch. Yeah, this is the battle of the slow Pokemon, so even Urshifu, relatively slow himself, is actually still going to have to use uh, Sucker Punch if he wants to accomplish anything here. Although, with the Wide Guard constantly being spammed out, it might not even be effective. Calyrex, uh, that's just going to be Ice Type. Is it going to be Ice Psychic or just Ice? It, if it Terra's, it will go into it will go into an Ice Type here. But I don't think either running Terra Ice. You see Terra Fire on Artan's team. You're te seeing Terra Grass on Steven's team. Because if he sucker punches into the uh, Calyrex, that could be pretty decent. In fact, I think this might be what he was afraid of here. We're going to see the Calyrex on the side of Steven swished out back into and there's the Amoongus. The Amoongus. Yeah. Mr. Gus himself. <laughs> Mr. Gus. Protect is going to come out. So that's another turn. He's not going to be able to do too much because a wide guard, once again, coming up from Pelipper. And Amoongus just coming in. This is just a solo turn for the Urshifu. And the soccer punch. Soccer punch doesn't do anything. This is a nothing turn. Steven is, Steven is in the flow. He is feeling good. Trick Room is now down. Blood Moon Ursaluna is going to return. Glacial Lance is going to go out. But if he wide, how many wide guards does he have left? I'm not entirely sure. I have not been counting. Yeah, he's been using them basically every turn since the Calyrex has come out. So I'm not sure exactly the PP that this move has. But... Uh, it's about 10, so we're definitely not going to be at 10 uses yet. No, but it's it probably might... PP max, so it's probably 16. Oh, that's true. So he's not going to run out of wide guards anytime soon. First Fu is going to come back. Blood Moon Ursaloon is going to retake the stage. But it's not really his show, because he's at 16 each. There's the wide guard again. Yeah, this is just such a huge problem to deal with on the side of Artan. You might even consider switching your Calyrex for something else next game, and you could actually see the Annihilate coming out or something else. But this wide guard is just yeah. too big of a problem to deal with. And there's the Spore. Just really Folks, cementing it. Artan is going to have to fight a lot of things to come back here. With Ursaluna being asleep, with Calyrex really not going to be able to hit anything. Going to try and reset up Trick Room, try and make some sort of comeback. It is running Sleep Talk, so there's this very slim chance it could really accomplish something here with this random move it's going to use. It would knock itself out in the process, so either way, 
this Ursuline is very likely going to fall here in this turn, but I wouldn't be surprised if he actually even wants to stall it out and get his Calyrex in to get the knockout. So you get Chilling Nay to just really guarantee the victory. Um, really, it could go either way what these players have decided. We're gonna You're seeing see the Terra here from Steven. Steven, we're going to see Terra, the Terra Mungus entering that dark type form, which really might steal the game. It's no longer going to be weak to those Glacial Lances. That's true, but in fact, yeah, he doesn't even really need to use Glacial Lance anymore. I um, uh, Wide Guard anymore, as Ursula is going to go down, and I believe that Calyrex is asleep as well. So, and there's the Spore. And now oh, no, Calyrex no. goes to sleep. It was the Ursaluna that was put to sleep. Now Calyrex is asleep. And this is just a huge problem. Yeah, I don't know if there's an option to come back here for R10. Maybe you take the loss, try and gain that little bit of time, refocus yourself. You have to realize that that Pelipper's got to go down as soon as it hits the field. He's going to play it out. We'll see what he does. Close combat into the Amoongus. It is now weak to those fighting type attacks. He's going to try and set up this, the Trick Room with Calyrex, as that is his win con. Thankfully, he did bring the Urshifu, so you, going to the next game, you are going to have something that allows you to break through these um, wide guard kind of stalls. If you just send out your Urshifu, you can just do a couple of really nasty hits. Yeah. It's a very strong hitter. Calyrex wakes that's... up! Oh! Oh, it's not yeah. a rolling that one turn to sleep! Trick Room, he's still in this. Trick Room none goes of these, up. None of these Pokemon can really threaten the. the but he is going to forfeit that. as that wide guard is up, and there's not much he can do. Is that his only damaging move? He has close combat, but oh, really yeah. into a Pelipper. What's it going to do? Exactly. Yeah, Glacial Lance. It's close combat something you really want to do against like a very specific read, like maybe into an opposing Calyrex. That's probably why he brought yeah. it, but against a Pelipper. Yeah, so Steven takes game one there. Incredible draw by Steven. Arten's going to have to take the chance, refocus himself, and figure out what the next steps are forward. Uh, I think one of the next steps, I really don't, I kind of suggested it, but I don't, I really don't think he's going to opt to get rid of the Calyrex. What actually, oh, it's, it's such a difficult choice because if you know exactly what Steven's going to bring to the next game, you could try to optimize here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past him to try something like Smeargle, Annihilate, um, these Pokemon that can buff their teammates. So even if you're not getting the optimal switch-ins, the optimal hits, you're still going to be doing really decent damage thanks to those boosts. Maybe he could go for something like that, like uh, Smeargle, Annihilate, Urshifu, and then you pick one of uh, any of the other ones here. Yeah. Um, he Did he take the Furgraph in that game? I actually don't recall. It wasn't not. The no, he did not no. take the Furgraph. Calyrex, it was Smeargle, Calyrex, Ursaluna, Urshifu. Yeah. So maybe he could try to go for some kind of boost play into all inning on something a little bit more flexible than the Calyrex, but can't really say for sure. The, the issue here is you need an option to deal with 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 that Pelipper. That mm -hmm. Pelipper was doing so much damage, and the wide guards were so effective on blocking Calyrex from doing any sort of damage. So now the question is, how do I deal with Pelipper? And maybe Frigraph is your best option. I mean, Ursula Blood Moon doesn't tech well into it. Urshifu doesn't tech well into it. You have a lot of Pokemon that are just weak to flying type attacks that don't want to sit in front of a Pelipper. Here we're going to see the same lead as before. And I actually, really, I was thinking about it. I think it makes sense to just go for this. The problem really was the fact that he lost his Smeargle. Like I said, he's, he acknowledged himself. He needs the Smeargle to really get things started. Imagine how that game would have gone if... Pelipper was asleep, <laughs> right? If he got a single spore off um, before, I think he Terra grassed into, uh, I'm not sure what move he tried to go for, but it definitely did not go his way. No. Steven immediately gonna Terrasalize onto his Urshifu. That's gonna be the- Terra Ghost. Ghost. Okay. We got the Ghost Bear out. Ghost Bear, and he is gonna be with the Scarf. Yeah. Is anybody? So it's... Oh, it's Cinderella. Oh, and it blocks the fake out. What a read by Steven there. That is... And down scary. goes Smeargle. Smeargle is gone again without being able to do anything for the second battle in a row. Really scary. That's an ins that's, that's such a crazy call-out. Like, that's... Like, that's... I'm sorry. That's a really crazy call-out to make. And yeah. it paid off for sure. Like, what an incredible read by Steven. And Calyrex takes half damage. Gets up the Trick Room, thankfully. This is, this is the kind of call-out that you have nightmares over. 
Oh, what a what a very smart move from Steven. And it gets, it's gonna put Artan back on such a back foot. He's gonna have to be playing from now. He's already got his Calyrex down to half. No healing, of course. And now he's sending out his Urshifu in hopes of finding an opportunity to get something done. Thankfully, like I said before, Urshifu is your get it done guy. He's a yeah. very capable and strong resilient worker so i'm sure he's going to be able to find the means to get something done but it's just imagine if you get something done but you don't have your strongest pokemon at half hp and you lose out on your real main setup yeah urshifu has to remove pelipper this turn if it does not remove pelipper things are starting to get gonna get really dicey so we have to see Pelipper go down here tear into the steel probably to resist any kind of uh spore actually no spore would still be able to go through its poison. Yeah, That's but he resists resist those it. hurricanes and he resists yeah. those weather. He doesn't resist the weather ball, but he won't take. He'll take the same amount of damage. Pelipper going for the wide guard. Urshifu is going to hit through it. I really. Oh, There's okay. the glacial lance I mean, blocked by the well. wide guard. You don't want to. You, you actually don't want close combat to connect because it's just going to make you weaker. Um, you don't want to waste your protect. I get, and you honestly don't want to trick room because it just slows down your Urshifu. So there's the wicked blow. Pelipper huge. lives with the focus ash. The so Pelipper will live for another day to get up one more wide guard, but no trick rooms up. That's the important thing. Urshifu is going to be first to go next turn. Um, yeah. Amoongus is not going to be able to get the spore off onto the Urshifu in time. Best case scenario for Steven, it's going to get the, uh, the spore off on one of them after he takes on the Calyrex. But actually, if... Oh! Yeah, Trick Room is still up. Oh, it is up! Yeah, I, Trick Room is it, up. <laughs> where did it even go up? I didn't even know it went up. Interesting. Okay, so Trick Room is going to be very relevant. So post-combat does take out Pelipper, but that Calyrex, its defense drops. This is fine. You'll Wide guard is down. It does get the attack raised, so we'll have to see if Calyrex can carry the rest of this battle. With that chilling nay, I think so. I think so for sure. Chilling nay is very strong. Here is the scary part: that Amoongus is slower than Calyrex. Mm, it is. With that Amoongus being slower, Calyrex is gonna have to try and survive, trying to deal deal with that Urshifu, or suffer going to sleep and taking a few turns to the nap. And now he's got to worry about his own Calyrex from his opponent coming out now. I'm really thinking, do you switch out your Calyrex because it's going to have the reduced stats? It can go for the Protect to absorb the Spore as well as the uh, the Glacial Lance. So Protect might just be the viable pick here. But at some point, I do think you consider getting it out of the way to recover some of those stats reduced from the Close Combat. Um, but Protect is going to come out. We're going to see most likely the Spore going to get absorbed by that. And then Glacial Lance, as we probably predict. I don't think this Calyrex has any kind of setup. So, no. But it is going to be the high That high horsepower power. does a lot. Urshifu is still sleeping. It is still, in fact, up. bedtime for Urshifu. It's got to wake up this turn. If it wants it to do anything, I don't know. It might Calyrex is going to leave. Yeah. You want that you want that Ursaluna to come out so your Calyrex can have some actual decent stats. It gives it the next turn, can come back to protect. I think you do want Trick Room up still because I think his Calyrex is slower yeah. than uh, Steven's and close combat, but you are losing the chilling nay, unfortunately. It's so many give and takes, but you gotta pick something here. And I think he did commit to that switch. Unfortunately, you're probably losing your uh, Ursula, your uh, Urshifu, which I just noticed has an axe sticking up the back of its head. A very interesting choice to signify steel typing. But Spore, gonna connect onto the Ursaluna. Spore, very, very powerful move. I don't think anyone's gonna disagree yeah, with that. There's the high por horsepower. Urshifu goes down. Folks, we might be seeing your other finalist. It might be Steven. We gotta see R10 pull some incredible comeback. Mm -hmm. He's only got one turn to work with, too. But even so, ah, uh, Jesus, is hard. The okay. rain is gone, Trick Room is gone. So now we're playing with real speed. So that means that Steven's Calyrex is faster it's now. faster. But they're both acting after, uh, they're both acting before Amoongus. Yeah. So he's, okay, he's gonna go straight up just go for the Glacial Lance. Yeah, Glacial Lance, I mean... I don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> what, <laughs> right? Luna will Luna won't... Lo uh, there's the Rage Powder. Okay, right, if he, did, if he did go for the close combat, it would have been Rage Powdered. Yeah. I respect that a lot. Okay. See, I would have lost the game right here and there. 
but yeah, the rage powder. Ursaluna is still asleep. It does sleep talk. talk. Once again, it's sleep talk. Earth, Earth power. power. Does that take out Amoongus? No, Amoongus oh, lives. But Glacial Lance, it's gonna take it out for sure now. Yeah, because it does take that life orb damage. There's the Glacial Lance. Ursaluna. Ursaluna goes go down. down. Calyrex on its dying breaths. And you're not gonna have a turn to Trick Room. No. Nope. Do, do you have a turn to Protect? <laughs> Does he have any more Pokemon in the back, or is that it? I think that's it. There's the Glacial Lance. How much does it do? Pass. Not enough. It Not takes out the well. Amoongus. But Steven's Calyrex is faster and will finish the game off with one more Glacial Lance. Oh, man. This is spooky stuff here. Very spooky stuff. You got a Ghost-type Urshifu coming out with some Choice Scarf. Yeah. We're in regular dimensions. So. And folks... Your other finalist for today is Steven Stark. Very well played by Steven today. Unconventional team coming out from our ton, but it worked out in a lot of regards. We didn't get to see the Annihilate, unfortunately. I was a big fan, and we didn't get to see the Smeargle do its thing, unfortunately. Would have been huge to see the Smeargle really work out its niche and kind of fulfill the strategy he was trying to go for. But an interesting team. Liked it a lot, like both of these competitors kind of bring in their A game. I'm very excited to see what Steven's going to do for us here in the finals that we're going to have coming up soon. Yeah, it's been a great run by Steven. He lost that first game in round four, and his comeback has just been completely dominant. It switch flipped, and he got into the driver's seat and has controlled every match. Mm -hmm. Artem losing Smeargle both rounds there was really hard and impactful on the rest of his team. So I think Steven has been known, knows what to target and knows what to do. So it'll be exciting to see how he matches up in his aid. We've had some great Great matches today. Absolutely. That game, again, it came down to, at some points, a single point of speed making the difference um, with those Trick Room setups and the Calyrex plays. Um, unfortunately, for our thought, he's going to end up losing today. But, again, great plays from both trainers. Very exciting. Really embodying the spirit of what we're out here today for. And that's just to see some awesome Pokemon. So, thankfully, we're going to have at least one more match of awesome Pokemon here for you today. If you watch this far, I really doubt you want to miss the finals, so don't go anywhere. That's going to be our grand finals coming up next. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We've been here all day for this moment. It's going to be the grand finals of the first day of the mid-season showdown. And it's going to be, of course, Zayn Youssef versus Steven Stark playing in the grand finals. One representing the Ice Rider, one representing the Shadow Rider, who's going to take home the prize of the pride of being the ultimate rider okay who's yeah. gonna take that home who will take the pride and the pride as the first winner of our mss quartet weekend zane is an experienced player here he came third in our mss double header a few mm -hmm. weeks ago so zane is looking for that looking to make that first place finish here today for sure and in a new format no less show that you have this format on lock let everybody know to be afraid of you and uh, since he was the higher seed he actually got the choice of which side he's gonna play on he ended up making steven switch sides which i've been told steven ended up being 2-0 playing on that side but now he's on a different side who knows maybe that's gonna be what ultimately takes away his mojo coming back into this game you know yeah what I mean? So it is the story of Zane. It seems to be the favorite in chat versus Steven, who has been on stream for the past two rounds and has really made a name for himself as that dominant comeback player. Again, let's go over Zane's team for one more time. For a reminder, we got Calyrex Shadow Rider. We got the Urshifu Rapid Strike, Incineroar, Amoongus, Tornadus, and Iron Hands. Really, that's sort of those core five support mods plus Shadow Rider. It is a strong team and is a hard team to beat. I have to see... The thing is, he does not have that Pelipper, so we're losing that wide guard support, mm. which was really helpful for Steven. So Steven has the Pelipper with the wide guard. We have Raging Bolts, we have Amoongus, Incineroar, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and we are already getting into it. And now they're going straight into the battle. It's going to be Zane versus Steven. Intimidate already being very relevant with two physical attackers really taking the brunt of this intimidation. I feel like this is the first time today we're really seeing Intimidate be like actually relevant. Yeah. A bunch of special attackers getting intimidated, but now we're seeing you know two real physical attackers taking it here. Um, fake out. Uh, is going to be in the hands of... That's going to be, of course, Incineroar running that, but who else? Is it going to be the opposing Incineroar as well? Yes, so both Incineroars running the fake out. Iron Hands also. So we're going to see a potential three fake out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fake out potential out. here. Raging What's bolt. interesting here is there is that Terra from Zane. I'm assuming, on the Urshifu. Yeah, that Terra Urshifu. Yeah. We have got us a Ghost Bear on the field. It's Ghost Bear time from Steven, trying to block one of those three Intimidates that could possibly come out. No, that's Zane. They're both running Urshifu Rapid Strike. But the fake out gets called out once again. Steven made this play. Actually, no. Steven made this play before, but now Zane's doing it with the Ghost uh, Urshifu into the Surging There's Strike. Surging Strike. And Sinor are probably going to go down here. Most, most likely. Steven already not too favored on this new side of the field gonna lose his first Pokemon here and now yeah the roar of victory look at him that Urshifu <laughs> is very proud of what he's accomplished force to switch in now the Calyrex is gonna be his next pick I think that makes sense here you want to try to get some momentum back in your favor and if it means bringing out your restricted mon so be it you don't really have any setup potential on your team anyways you don't have like an Amoongus sitting there rage powdering so yeah. if it means meeting offense with offense Go for it. Yeah. We are going to see the Terra Ghost from the Calyrex here. Getting that Grass-type Terra, blocking that super effective, sur blocking the Surging Strikes, blocking all of those different attack moves. Actually going for the Glacial Lance. Thinking what to do. We're going to see the Dragon Pulse onto the... Uh, no, rethinking. Terra Grass, Glacial Lance. Into the Dragon Pulse to try and take out that Urshifu. Urshifu switches out. I mean, as always, there's no such thing as an easy decision against these competitors. The Amoongus so is here. Gotta really contemplate, but Amoongus is out here. No wide guard, of course, so, you know, Calyrex is actually going to be able to be a threat. We didn't really get to see that much yeah. in the last game, and it's going to Terra into Grass. Yeah. And uh, that's going to help it resist. We'll see how much damage it does to Amoongus here. Something. <laughs> Dragon Falls coming out, yeah. doing blocks, a good amount of damage. Blocks the fighting type attacks from Iron Hands. Okay, it there blocks it the water type attacks from Urshifu. Terra Grass is really strong here. Here's the Glacial Lance. No stab. Amoongus goes down. Amoongus came out, said hello, and left once again through the vents. 
I am very happy to see that. I'm very much not a fan of Amoongus. Uh, it is such an annoying Pokemon to deal with, and all the things it can do can really drag things to a halt. But now Zane, really not going to have that very important part of his team there to rely on. Um, it is a strong Pokemon. It is very strong. Losing it this early means that now sleep isn't a factor here. They're both down one for one, and they both lost support mons. And now we're seeing both of the horses facing off against each other. Except yeah. this Calyrex is already buffed. Yeah, the, Cal the Ice Rider is buffed. It is also in Trick Room. Steven's in a great position. He will have to see what he does. He's going to go... Is he in Trick Room? I thought he Trick Room. I guess not. He does not have Trick Room up. I am wrong. Trick Room is not up. Okay, this is where the Ice Rider really starts to kind of overcome against the Cali or the uh, Shadow Rider, where you know the Ice Rider can withstand some hits from the uh, Shadow Rider, doesn't work the other way around. So he's comfortable just taking a turn to Trick Room, yeah. maybe take a hit from the uh, Shadow Rider. Oh, the Snarl's gonna do a lot. Asha Barrage is coming out as well. Raging Bull takes it. Calyrex takes they it. Both take it There's a the Snarl. It's huge. Ton of damage. Calyrex drops its special attack, which is horrible for it. Glacial Lance is probably special attack going down. Glacial Lance probably wipes both of them. Yeah. Um, especially since he's no longer a water type. He is a ghost. Official a ghost. ghost. And, you know, he's been taken into the fold, one of our fellow ghost types. And uh, Thunderclap, Glacial Lance, this... I mean, he still has Iron Hands in the back line. Yeah. But I can't see either of these Pokemon taking any more damage. No, I don't think you can protect both these Pokemon. Gonna protect the Calyrex. Do we see a double protect? I don't think this Urshifu has protect. It does not. There's the Glacial Lance. It's plus two now. After taking out this Urshifu. Urshifu yes. goes down. We now have a plus two Calyrex on the field. <laughs> yes. It's getting scarier by the minute here, folks. You can feel the chill coming and entering the room. I'm, hey, you know, besides ghost types, I always love me some ice types too. That's why Glalie is one of my favorite, okay? And uh, love to see ice types finally fighting success in this new generation. Not even needing to use that hail change. Ice Rider just being such a strong Pokemon in its own respects here. Iron Hand's coming out, but even a Pokemon this tanky, I don't think is going to be very comfortable taking a plus two. No, a plus Lance. two is real scary. Half HP too. It's looking pretty, pretty set in stone here, or rather set in ice. Yeah. In. You can feel the cold air coming in as Steven gets a little bit more comfortable. And there's the Glacial Lance. It picks up the final two KOs. Ice Rider, the true hero of that battle, as it knocked out all four Pokemon that game. Yeah, MVP for sure. Get this guy a raise, you know, give him a vacation on a cruise or something. Give him some kind of accolade for his accomplishment here against Zane in game one. Steven, try not to get too excited. You still got a long way to go, and uh, you got to make sure you're staying focused, staying ready. Love to see that focus coming right back to uh, Steven here in this game. But as we get ready to head into this next one, like, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made for both of these participants, but... I really doubt we're seeing Calyrex going anywhere. No, I think both Calyrex will still be there. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Zane actually bring Tornadus to this matchup and maybe drop Amoongus. I think Tornadus and that Bleak Windstorm, as much as Bleak Windstorm is a risky move, mm. you know Pelipper will be there, so you know that probably Rain will go back up and Bleak Windstorm will become 100% accurate. It is Terra Dark, so even though it is flying type, Glacial Lance would be super scary against it. But if you really want to, you can commit to Terra. Better off, you're probably more favored at just not switching the Tornadus into the Calyrex at all and yeah. letting it be your kind of initial starter. Maybe even as a lead, you could just immediately rain dance or even, uh, does it have Tailwind up? Or it does It does get Tailwind. Tailwind gets, and rain dance. Yeah, if that Tailwind goes up and you can pre uh, prevent the Trick Room from going up, you're in a great position there. Mm -hmm. So it's got Tailwind, Bleak Wind, Protect, and rain dance. So its only damaging move is Bleak Wind. Um, I think... Hmm. If he does lead with Tornadus, who else did he lead with? Did he, he, he led with Urshifu, right? Yeah. So you won't even need to get Tailwind up. You could just go straight into Rain Dance. Maybe even Protect if we see a situation where there's a bunch of fake outs coming yeah. out again. Um, but I think that Tornadus is actually going to be a solid starter. Yeah, I think if Rain Dance goes up, it's going to be a very powerful... 
You have a very powerful Urshifu on your side with all those rapid strikes. Mm -hmm. It could uh, it could actually threaten the uh, Calyrex in the first turn. Um, oh, absolutely. Plus, with um, the Tornadus kind of absorbing some attention, it might even be a very potent threat and distraction. But we're seeing the lead. It's actually going to be Urshifu and uh, Shadow Rider versus the uh, Incineroar and Ice Rider. Very yeah. similar leads. So both ho horses are going to start off on their sides of the field. The two abilities combined into one with that earn nerve locking down berries, which is the interesting thing is we can't see we won't see berries much in this regulation G. But that's the thing with abilities like unnerve and um, inner focus stuff like that. It's like, do I really care if I'm not gonna flinch or if they're not gonna eat berries? But when you care, you really care. Yeah. Uh, so that's the real threat of these moves. Shrek Room, again. I, actually, I don't know. I feel like that last game, the Trick Room was solid because he was very comfortable absorbing the hit from um, those Pokemon. But I feel like here, I don't know if you can afford to get hit by both of these Pokemon. But he is banking on the Fake Out, potentially. But once again, we do see the Terrastalization into the Ghost Type. So yeah. he went to Fake Out onto the Urshifu, but it's a Ghost Type now. Fake Out's not going to come out. You have two Ghost Types now hitting you on your uh, Ice Rider, at least I'm assuming, but yeah. we are seeing the Terra here into the Grass type. So Surge Strikes assume, yeah. might not be that effective. I, I still don't know. I feel like it's still pretty scary. Yeah, it's really hard to call what's going to happen here. Are we going to see the full out attack off turn one? There's the Fake Out into the Ghost Bear. Doesn't do anything. There's the U-turn. Ooh, Super effective damage. Not a ton of damage, but enough to get Urshifu out of trouble here. Both players reading each other. Uh, I really didn't expect this turn to play out like this, honestly. No. <laughs> but this is how it's going here. Maybe we, you're going to even see High Horsepower come out instead of uh, Glacial Lance, just because one actually, no, he did Trick Room, right? He committed to the yeah. Trick Room. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Basically, if he survives this turn, he's guaranteeing Shadow Rider goes down next. Oh, turn. yeah. Shadow Rider is in a very scary position here. You have to be very careful. You do not want to lose Shadow Rider too early here. In any case, that might just have to happen if things keep going the route they are right now. And is going to be next to come out. Intimidate, not going to be really relevant because of the clear amulet. Once again, I always get excited to see, oh, but the Intimidate. But then I see, oh, yeah, clear amulet. Here's so. the Astral Barrage. And it's moment of truth here. If you knock it out, you knock it out. But you're definitely not going to. Not Gets even it down do below that. half. That's, important. That's an important stat here. It is pretty big. And with the Incineroar coming out to threaten the Fake Out. Yeah, that could be huge. Yeah, the fake out is really scary. You do not want to take another faked out Astral Barrage. So he is going to protect, which mm -hmm. I do not disagree with. And we are going to see good old Moongus probably hit the field here. But now you have to really assume that this is kind of the obvious play. You don't, like, he's probably assuming he's going to go for the protect. So then if you're going to go for the protect, it's because you're assuming that they're both going to try to go for your one guy. Yeah. So they're assuming you're going to switch in. So maybe they're actually kind of pivoting into your switch in instead, right? You have to protect on Calyrex, but Zane does not have to hit the Calyrex. No. So that's a lot of moving parts to this here. puzzle here. We'll have to see what happens. Calyrex goes back. Shadow Rider is getting out of dodge. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, he did not have to hit him. He just had to put him in a position where he has no choice but to protect. There's yeah. no universe where you don't protect here. It's just too risky. So he has to protect. That's going to give him the opportunity. In fact, he didn't even fake out onto the Calyrex. He faked out onto the Moons because he knows he doesn't have to. He's just taking this opportunity two free turns. And uh, that's going to allow him to get his Shadow Rider out and get his, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of chip damage onto a Moongus. Yeah. Um, I believe that Steven switching his Ice Rider out is a little too low to be too comfortable here. It's not boosted by anything. It, the only thing that you got to worry about is the fact that Trick Room is up and every turn that goes by, it's ticking down. So you're not going to have as much value out of that Trick Room as you otherwise would like to. But it's better to do that than to lose your, your Ice Rider. Yeah, you really got to protect. You really are going to lose those Trick Room terms. I don't know if they'll come back, which is scary because you know that that Astral Barrage will will finish off Calyrex. Spore goes into Iron Hands here. Iron Hands is going to take that nap for us. See who comes in next. Oh, this is such a scary thing to consider here. Both Incineroars here. <laughs> Who's going to go? There's the taunt. Okay. Onto the Amoogus. Like Amoogus can no longer Spore. Sleep time is over. Does it run any? It, it is running Pollen Puff at the very least. So it's not going to be doing absolutely nothing. But I feel like switching itself is just scary. 
Yes. Because whatever you switch is probably going to eat a parting shot. And if you don't switch, then you're stuck with an Incineroar. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want that. So no. Raging Bolt comes out here to take the field to relieve Amoongus from that taunt. Mm -hmm. And that's probably going to be a parting shot onto the Raging Bolt. If uh, Zane made the correct read, which I wouldn't be surprised. Iron Head wakes up, only one, one turn to sleep. Unbelievable. Incineroar takes a ton of damage here that it did not want to take. There's the knockoff. Goodbye to Assault Fest. Hello to a lot more damage for the rest of this game. Knockoff coming out onto the Incineroar. No more safety goggles, which could really become relevant. Actually. Yeah, I mean, sleep is up. Sleep is back on the table. So Amoongus is going to take the field again. What are we going to see? We're going to see Snarl here is my guess, but maybe not. Okay, Volt Switch actually does make a lot of sense. It's just a lot of pivoting going on between these players, but again, at this point, it, it I feel like the Switch plays just add a, an extra layer of complexity and fear to anything you do, because getting run, one wrong Switch or one a predicted Switch could spell the end of your game completely. Yeah. There's the parting shot into the Amoongus, which really Amoongus does not care about. Yep, you're very happy with this. You're very content with this. This is probably exactly what he was hoping to get. The parting shot into his lesser or less relevant Pokemon, forcing the uh, Incineroar out. So now you don't have to worry too much about these parting shots, uh, switch out shenanigans much more. Um, and now you're going to have to actual, real, credible threats that you can deal with instead of the threat of threats. And now it's at half HP. And Among Us, can you do Spore? Because Trick Room is still up. Yeah, Trick Room is up. Taunt, I think Trick Room might go down this turn, but Taunt is now off the table again until Incineroar comes back out. I would actually like to see the Incineroar come back in. Does yes. Calyrex come back in? I think Calyrex is going to come is. back in. Hope okay. for a Puff to heal back up some HP. Oh, that's, that would be huge. That would actually be huge. I don't know if he can threaten the Calyrex with these two Pokemon. Trick Room goes down, so now's the question. Oh, that's... That's... Okay, that's huge. It's going to be close. He does have that Rage Powder to reset okay. up Trick Room. Okay, he's got that. Yeah, no spread moves coming out from these Pokemon. That could be exactly what he needs. If he can survive this turn, he might have just cleared himself a path through victory in a very unconventional way. Getting yeah. this heal onto this Calyrex would actually be insanely beneficial to Steven. And uh, with that Trick Room being back up in that same turn as well, he could heal his Calyrex into a Glacial Lance that his opponent could do nothing about. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really down to the wire own Calyrex could be coming out once again, or is it going to be the Incineroar? Yeah. The other Calyrex is coming back out. It's just been ringing around the rosy. We're right back to square one, it feels. Except this time we got a mushroom here. Rage There's powder the Rage Powder. Out. Again, making the most of the fact that you have an idea of what your opponent's going to be doing. You know you can't really do anything about it, so you just play around it as best as possible. He's going to switch in his uh, Shadow Rider just to threaten things once again, and he's going to pivot out, doing as much damage as he possibly could have that turn with that U-turn, as well as getting the pivot. Um, probably well, Incineroar. Incineroar probably, probably takes the field again. This one, however, does not have safety goggles anymore. So this actually, once again, could be relevant. It could be the case, however, with that fake out being usable once again, this would force the Rage Powder instead of the Pollen Puff. There's a lot of factors at play here. There's so Zane's got to make, or Steven has to make an incredible read here. I don't even what think it, happens? I don't even think if it's going to be a read. I think he just has to kind of accept the fact that his plan no longer is going to work. He yeah. can't heal. This, uh, he can't heal this Calyrex anymore. Unless he goes for the Protect. But There's that so many up? different options down this pathway. But if he does that, then that gives Shadow Rider a turn to set up. He's but gonna spoil the Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider does not have Protect. Shadow Rider does have Protect, I am wrong. Oh, this just makes this is, things so much more complicated. This is such an insane game, too. You can see why <laughs> these two players have made it to the Grand Finals today. Oh, man. I have the benefit of, like, not being in this situation. And even I'm getting a headache just contemplating all the options. Yeah, Calyrex gets the Protect. Fake Out's going to come out. Fake Out. So no Spore. No Spore this it's turn. Probably going to be Nasty Plot coming out. No, Astral Barrage. Astral Barrage. That's actually, that, okay, no, protected. Okay, <laughs> scared me for a second. Scared me for a second. Okay, it is protected. So it's just gonna be this Amoongus taking it. 
Amoongus ah, lives. That's not good. <laughs> Amoongus lives. Fake out is off the table. Glacial Protect. Lance is, <laughs> is available. Protect off the table as well. More importantly. Palm Puff into the Calyrex. You want to just go all into the Calyrex. Fake out was the issue there. Yeah. That's not an issue anymore. You can heal up your Calyrex. You're still in this. And you can just completely demolish the uh, opposing Incineroar. Yeah. And even if Calyrex, basically you get one free turn on this Calyrex. That's so much health. It's full I didn't HP. think it would restore that much health. It's full HP. Calyrex is back up to full HP. If you, basically if Zane goes for a nasty plot, that just is the alarm that uh, Steven needs to know he has to start attacking it. Yeah, there's the Astral Barrage. Amoongus oh. goes down, Calyrex is still in a great position at plus one. But they're both at plus one now. So Both at plus one, Zane has the speed advantage. So Nasty Plot's not even necessary anymore. Next Astral Barrage will knock out this Ice Rider. Yeah. But will you get a turn? That's the question. That's the question. Here comes Incineroar. No fake out, because it's Ghost. But both both of the Pokemon switching in both have fake out. Oh, Eric. What do you do? What do you do? Eric, both of these Pokemon <laughs> have fake out. Oh. One of them can't get hit by fake out though. So this might be forcing Steven to protect again. Which, which would another allow turn of trick room. Another turn of trick room, which would allow him to knock out the Incineroar. Yep. With the Astral Barrage, which would threaten if he doesn't protect, <laughs> it would knock out the Ice Rider, so he's forced to protect. Switching in would just be a free KO, right? Onto the uh, Raging Bull. Bolt. This is wild. I, this is, I don't know what you do here. It's It really is. This is this is like the Pokemon battles you I see in the anime. Out. It fakes out the Incineroar, though. Okay. And it's a crit, too. The Glacial Lance. Lance. Does it knock out? I think it does. Cat no! With the one. I forgot about the Focus Sash! I completely forgot about the Focus Sash! I forgot about that Sash! Oh, and you can't... Oh, you can't do that because you couldn't fake out the Calyrex. Oh my god. That's a double KO. Folks, we are going to a game three. Oh, wow. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> this is why I tell everybody that Pokemon is the best strategy game out there. Yeah. You don't see this in chess, okay? What an absolutely insane play by Zane. I totally forgot that the Focus Ash was on the table. Yeah. I completely forgot about that fact. So when I was saying that you get one free turn because of this Trick Room, forcing Calyrex into setup to be a threat, you don't have to worry about that anymore because he gets a plus one and because he has Sash. So yeah. you, it's, it's, uh We'll see what happens there. Raging Bolt's gonna go for the Snarl. Iron Hands comes back. Wait, does he get the double knockout here? He actually might because he, I forgot he is slower yeah. than both. He is still slower with the double K. Oh, but the Protect and Trick Room ends after this turn for sure. Does so he does have, but he still has a uh, thunderclap. Thunder he has thunderclap. He has thunderclap. So this <laughs> knocks. But he has Iron Hand still. This is why he switched it out. Oh my god. This is why he switched it out. So he can bring back the Iron Hands. Oh wow. This is insane, folks. Wow. We this are. This is absolutely insane. Twelve. There is it added progress? We are so sorry. <laughs> Twelve dimensional gameplay. Yeah. Honestly. But how much is Iron Hands at? It is it is pretty low, but unlike Calyrex, this doesn't buff itself every time it gets a knockout. No. So <laughs> but does Iron Hand it has fake out. Fake out. <laughs> oh. And there's no protect. No protect. So the best he could do is try to thunderclap one of them. Yeah, but that's not gonna work. So there's that's gonna fake be an out. Astral Barrage. There's the Astral Barrage. Triple boost. Folks, we are going to a game three. Beautiful. <laughs> Very oh my good God. play coming up from both of these competitors. Zane completely navigating that minefield masterfully. And this is why Focus Sash is an item, yep. <laughs> I think. That, oh. Wow, I completely, I can't, I completely forgot about Focus Sash. Yeah. And this is the benefit. Wow, this is <laughs> why, this is why, wow, this is why Shadow Rider being weaker is actually a benefit because Sash becomes relevant. You don't have to run clear amulet because guess what? Intimidate doesn't affect special attack. So no. you don't have to worry about intimidate. You're allowed to run an item that doesn't do what clear amulet does, yeah. which is focus sash. Oh wow. That is there's so <laughs> there's so many things. Most of it, not even most of it, so much of it before the battle even starts, which yeah. is 
what's this Pokemon's weakness? So what item am I gonna use to supplement it? Even just that decision alone, influencing so much in this battle. Because imagine, you like you wouldn't run Focus Sash on Ice Rider. You don't need it. No. You're not clear amulet, but you do. Oh wow. Okay. You know this is this is absolutely incredible. insane, and we're going to get ready for the. <laughs> game three, what a better way to cap off day one than a game three match. This is the first game three we're seeing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, folks, we are going We are going to be here all weekend playing Pokemon all weekend. Yes. Tomorrow we're going to have even more players, even more players tomorrow and Sunday starting at two, uh, starting around 1.30 tomorrow. So you do not want to miss it if you want more intense Pokemon action. For all sure. of these players fighting for a chance to get to Worlds, to go to Hawaii, to challenge to be the number one Pokemon player in the world. Absolutely, and if you want to know more about when we're doing events and all kinds of stuff like that, of course, join the Saints Gaming Discord or follow the Saints Gaming CA Twitter to know about all the events that we're doing all the time. So make sure you're staying tuned with us here and you're staying tuned with us there, but don't forget all about the action that's going to be right here, right now, as we're heading to this final game of today's tournament of this four day event. Calyrex is both of them leading the charge. And I just realized again, that Calyrex didn't take a single point of damage up until that point. So nope. even if it, did, wow. Yeah. And Pelipper is on the field. Pelipper is an incredibly scary Pokemon here for Zane to have to face down. It's got that, tr it's got that wide guard, which really just shuts down Calyrex as an option. What's unfortunate to remember, however, is this is also buffing the Urshifu. Yeah. Um, whether or not you're gonna terrestrialize into the grass type, you still need to worry about taking that huge damage. But oh yeah, so okay, never mind. I was gonna say, why do you want the wide guard? But I forgot that um, Shadow Rider actually is using a spread move as well. Yes, with Astro Barrage yes. there. Yes, uh, but what's unfortunate to remember is right now there is no Trick Room up, so Nasty Plot is viable. Nasty Plot is an option. Trick Room will go up as long as the Ice Rider survives. So that is the scary thing to think about here. That is Wide guard goes however. up. Will it be useful this turn? We shall see. Because nasty plot would make There's it so that. There's the U-turn. Does a good bit of damage to Calyrex. That is a scary amount of damage. What a good read there from Zane. Yeah, we're in a very similar situation to where we were before. And I have a bad feeling that this one play is going to be hugely relevant to the rest of the game. Ripple yeah. effects are going to be uh, Incineroar is here. Felt. Incineroar is here, clear amulet, doing so much There's the side shock. It does not go for wide guard, does not go into effect. Pelipper still hangs on. Low HP. Trick and Trick Room coming. goes up. Slow gamers rise up now. It's their turn to play. They get the initiative. They might be low HP, but they're still high in spirit. They can use the protect here to buy himself one more turn, but do you want to do that? Once again, the kind of mining that comes into play here when it comes to whether or not you go for the... Uh, like a, a setup move versus just going for an attack is you have a turn to work with against the Shadow Rider where you have to, has to use Nasty Plot before it really threatens your Ice Rider. Um, so you can wait a turn to see if it's gonna Nasty Plot. Next turn, you're still gonna act first. Then you can just take it out and punish it if it does. Unfortunately yeah. though, what we just remembered from last game is it's using Focus Sash. Yeah, so you have to destroy that Focus Sash sooner rather than later. Incineroar is gonna Terra here. We are gonna see that Terra Water Incineroar it's a water, but it is a water tiger time. But no, without fake out, it's so committal to try to get any damage onto um, the Shadow Rider. It's gonna protect here, but is that gonna be relevant? Yes. Fake out. It is. In a protect. Good read by Steven there. But when's the next move coming out, Calibrex? Psyshock doesn't infect Incineroar. What a switch there. Oh, right, it's dark type. Okay, kind of completely forgot about that whole interaction. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, Blocking the side shock. Let's see what happens here. Glacial Lance is going straight for it. Uh, and it's going to try out Into out. the other Incineroar. Will Incineroar switch out and go into something else? What's most likely the read is coming out from here is yes, the protect or end or switch in um, yeah. to a different Pokemon on the side of Zane. Either way, you're happy with it and you'll take it. it seems that Incineroar is just going to stand his ground and uh, just take whatever is going to get thrown at him. Don't have much of a choice. You don't want to do anything too committal. So that's one turn bought for Shadow Rider. How many more turns of Trick Room do we have, though? I don't I think he's know. only got. I think he's got two turns of Trick Room left. He's got to start dealing damage. Hmm. But any kind of switches again, it's just so committal. I don't know if you want to. I feel like what you want to do, maybe. I mean, Parting Shot is still a valid threat, but 
I mean, your your Ice Rider could go down. I don't know. It's I so hard to predict what's going to happen here. I feel like you just go all out on the offense. Just Glacial Lance and hit into the Calyrex slot. Even if it's not hitting Calyrex, it's going to hit something. Yeah, and Calyrex switches out. Something else is coming in. Okay. Smart. It's Urshifu. And How one. does Urshifu eat a Glacial Lance? Let's see. It is not the strong, defensively the strongest Pokemon. It eats it actually surprisingly well. Pretty well. There's the knockoff. Goodbye to the clear amulet. It is open to intimidates. It is open to part to parting shots. It is open to everything in the book. Parting shot onto the Urshifu, however. Honestly, though, I really don't think it matters that much. The way Urshifu, of course, with the critical strikes, I don't think that's going to be affected by the um, stat change. You could get Pelipper back in, threaten Hurricane. But I think you need Pelipper for later to watch out for Astral Barrage. That's true. Here comes Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt takes the stage. Taking the stage. This is the last turn of Trick Room. <sighs> you gotta get something done here. But we saw that it's not that effective. With Incineroar, it's not running any kind of Protect. So if going for high horsepower, again, you're not even really hitting Incineroar. You're just hitting that slot. If Incineroar stays there, great. You knock it out. If yeah. it switches out, Great, you're, doing, you're hitting something for really decent damage at the very least. You see um, the bolt switch here into the Incineroar, or into the Urshifu slot. Probably, probably trying to bring out Pelipper for next turn. Coming out now. I just, I, every time I Incineroar leaves, Incineroar is out of there. It can't be the Shadow Rider, it couldn't be. It's, Shadow Rider. it's Iron Hands, Iron Hands is going to go down. Yeah, for sure, it's going to take a lot of damage at the very least, and that's going to be a plus one to the Calyrex if it does go down. So oh, Iron Hands live! It's tanky for sure. Uh, Volt Switch. Fresh food goes down. Huge damage, huge damage. Steven slowly carving his way back into this game here. This is the first Pokemon to go down here, and you don't want it to be your Urshifu. Unfortunately for him, that is definitely going to be the case. We're seeing the Iron Hands with the Assault Vest in hand. You could make the read, see if he's going to send in the, uh, the Shadow Rider and send out your Pelipper instead, but that means that it's going to be vulnerable to the Iron Hands. Otherwise, switch out your own Incineroar and risk leaving yourself vulnerable to, you know, the yeah. Astral Barrage. And you can't fake out the, the Shadow Rider. So. Rain is gone. Trick Room is gone. We go back to regular speed stats here, folks. I don't know what you do here. There is no right answer, unfortunately, for either of these players. They're, they just have to make the... I can't even say best decision possible. You just have to make the decision that you think is most likely uh, based off of your own internal brain calculations to be in favor based off of what you calculate your opponent's gonna do. Uh, Calyrex is gonna be the back out. Fake out is available to both these players here. But realistically, you can only use it onto the uh, Iron Hands. You could protect with your Calyrex, but then what does that do? That just buys. Um, Shadow Rider, one turn to do whatever it wants, right? Yeah. Oh, such a hard decision to make. And I feel like, unfortunately, this is really the turn where it kind of yeah, comes Yeah, this is going to be the turn that decides who wins, who walks out of this game as the winner. So, you got to make some kind of play. There's the fake out into the Iron Hands. But this, uh, this Incineroar is going to take really good damage here. Astral Barrage, does Astral Barrage get the knockout? Calyrex lives! Okay. Glacial Lance is going to be the play onto both of them. Iron Hands falls and Calyrex is so low. It doesn't go down, which either way, it had the Sash, so it wouldn't have gone down anyways. Chilling Nay, but there's no Trick Room. No so Trick Room. It's not involved. No Trick Room. There's no fake out. There is no anything. There's nothing but the game. Like, there's just, it, this is it. There's no Pelipper for redirection. There is a, where Pelipper's stuck in the back. Pelipper cannot get out here this turn. I don't you think switch, you switch out Calyrex and save Calyrex for later. I think you just protect. Protect Calyrex. Yeah. Go for the knockoff. Try to take out Cali Try to take out Shadow Rider. No, he's just gonna commit. Oh. He's gonna commit. But what's the risk reward here, right? Like I think you gotta. I think you gotta protect. I. I. I here we go. But I think that's a prediction that he's there's making. There's the fake out. Incineroar okay. protect. Incineroar gets faked out, and there's the Astral Barrage. Uh huh. Folks, I think that has sealed the game. I don't know. I mean, he still has Raging Bolt. Still has Raging Bolt. It that's, might not be over. That's Thunderclap. He still has Raging Bolt Thunderclap. But that's that's the important thing. Incineroar's still healthy, right? Calyrex is nothing right now. It's at yeah. nothing. Um, which, which Incineroar is faster here? I'm trying to figure this out. 
165 on Stevens. Be, uh, levels aren't, uh, levels but they are not even levels. I I can't make that calculation. <laughs> I don't sure. know that calculation in, my, in the top of my head. <laughs> I uh, do not know which Incineroar is faster here. They both get cut down to 50, right? Yeah. So, I just don't know how far yeah, they get cut I down to know. 50. <laughs> okay. So thunderclap. All right, thunderclap into but Shadow then, Rider. Thankfully, Raging Bolt's at 100. Yeah. And and let's be real, Incineroar doesn't have any way of threatening this Raging Bolt. Yeah beyond a parting shot, which I can't use anymore. Shadow Rider so, uses Protect. Yeah, that's smart, of course. It's a good move. But, Volt, Volt switch. switch. Oh, that's the goes down. of the game. That's, that's gonna be the game. Steven winning this one out, unless we see something insane and I crazy wish. and scary. Yeah, Shadow Rider has gotta do it, gotta get like, I uh, don't know what Shadow Rider does here. Has to avoid both attacks and crit with uh, Astral Barrage. And Pelipper's back out. With the ride, with the wide guard, right? Does Zane have any tricks left up his sleeve? There's the knockoff into the protect. <laughs> Very scary stuff indeed for both these players. But based off what we're seeing, based off of numbers, battle is canceled, folks. Your winner for day one is Steven Stark and Ice Rider Calyrex. Ice Rider Calyrex. I really can't even say that. This was uh, like a surprise just based off of how the interactions were made, the teams were built, items, everything, all the different factors, minute details really just lent the edge to Ice Rider in these matchups. Yeah. So, but Zane, real, honestly, I would say the way these matchups were kind of played, it favored Ice Rider a lot. But yeah. Zane really stretched out the utility of the Shadow Rider to like the maximum degree, which is so impressive, all things considered. Yeah. Steven had some great usage there. Steven made an incredible comeback and really swept through those final rounds to beat Zane. Zane. Here's the interesting thing. Zane Cade thir third in our last piece in our last midseason showdown. He is now second. Will he get first tomorrow? <laughs> Maybe. Back? That's the question. Maybe indeed. Maybe he might even switch up his team for tomorrow. You know, it's it's a different day, it's a different tournament. You can use whatever team you want. Maybe he's gonna be running Spiritle. You that's never true. know, right? There's so many different things to consider. And again, that's the beauty of Pokemon. There's so many ways you can play, so many creative strategies, and there is never a right answer. It's only just try and see yeah. if it works such a great very great way to play from both of these players yeah what an incredible matchup and this is only the start we'll see more players tomorrow and we'll see more players on sunday and the battles will get even more intense as there are more points available by the more players we have exactly playing so again congratulations to steven and calyrex ice rider taking the first win of the weekend and congratulations to all of the players for sure everyone putting on such a great show for us it's a great community out there so much passion for the game so much passion for the community as well so for anybody who's coming tomorrow the day after the day after that or who can't come at all but wishes you were here very excited to have you on board but with all of that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning in and we hope you have a fantastic day because tomorrow it's going to be a big one, so make sure you get a lot of rest. But don't you sleep talk. You'll run out of PP for tomorrow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Daniil, joined by... My Veneric. We'll see you all at 1.30 tomorrow for the start of day two. Take care.